Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, friends. And welcome on back to the Perfection Randomizer. It's perfection, but random. Have you ever seen have you ever seen anything like it? I doubt it. I doubt it. How's everyone doing today? Hope you had a good past couple of days. Nothing too noteworthy for me personally, but you know what? Normal is on this is on the same end of the spectrum as good, as far as I'm concerned. So I think uh, I think we're doing all right. Hey there, Lisa, and all uh, we got Gray, Karita in here, Switch Glitch, Colleen, Alina, Banana Pie, Bean Boy, the best. We got all sorts of familiar faces. Museum Grack reads. Got Indian food on your way in a randomized perfection stream. Just finished your day in your game. Perfect timing then, Lisa. Perfect timing. Stop watching someone playing Tears of the Kingdom to be here. Tears of the Kingdom isn't out, is it? What? <laughs> I thought that's tomorrow. Well, I guess the, I guess time zones factor in, but I didn't think it was any. I didn't think it was out like anywhere yet. Maybe maybe there's some like advanced copies out there. I guess there would be like advanced like copies for reviewers and stuff, but I don't know. In the UK, fair enough. <laughs> What? Are you telling me all the world doesn't operate on my time zone? Museum Grack Reads, thank you for the 99 cent super sticker, by the way. Looking like a diamond in the rough. Thank you so much. I appreciate the generosity. And thank you to, uh, who did that? Who, who did exclamation point goal? I don't see anyone having typed exclamation point goal. Did Nightbot do that apropos of nothing at all? Or is it just a, just a late, was Nightbot just late to the party? Either way, I'm going to pin this. Do we have a PowerPoint breakdown of the plan? I kind of wanted to do one, but honestly, I didn't have time to make a PowerPoint. And we, we probably don't need a PowerPoint realistically. I'm going to tell you my goals. Today, I want to, um, I want to get through fall basically as fast as I can. There's, there's not much that I can actively do right now. Really, a lot of the plans come down to, like, we, we have access to the desert for, like, the uh, coconuts and the cactus fruit. That's that's taken care of for the desert obelisk. Money is a big factor. We're going to be working on that a little bit today. And the iridium bars. The iridium bars, unless we get ourselves an iron bar from the, from the garbage cans or from Clint in the mail, which I still don't know if that's even possible, sub one heart, but uh, we'll, we'll keep it going just in case. Then... Unless we unless that happens, we're gonna have to get our iridium bars from Skull Cavern treasure rooms. Which requires just waiting on our jade supply, basically. I think if we can get up to 50 jades, which will be 50 staircases, then I'm willing to to give it a little spelunking session. We'll see how it goes. I would also not mind getting some luck boosting food if I could. Um, preferably like a lucky lunch from the Star Drop Saloon, but if worse comes to worst, I can always... Actually, I don't know if I have any rubies on hand. I was thinking you can trade rubies at the Desert Trader for spicy eels, right? So maybe maybe that's something I could look into is getting a ruby today. Also, drop your bees in chat. It's not a long song. You got to get bboss.ogg celebratory emojis out there. Good way to start off the stream. Banana pie typed, typed exclamation point goal. Thank you, banana pie. Nightfall gaining sentient. Hello, Abby. Watch the Iron Bar become Cactus Fruit 2.0. It's highly possible. It's it's highly possible. We haven't gotten a duplicate bar yet. We've gotten a copper bar and a gold bar, both from the garbage cans. And uh, we haven't gotten a duplicate of either of those yet. So I'm, I'm, you know, fingers crossed. I literally crossed my fingers like you can see me right now. But <laughs> I'm, I'm more than just, uh, I'm more than talking symbolically here. I'm actually crossing my fingers. Other streamers might just say fingers crossed. And you... You're, when you tune into Argon Matrix's stream, you know that I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to do what I say. Three Omni Geodes for the lucky magic candy. Uh, I mean, it would be three Prismatic Shards, not three Omni Geodes, right? Which, which is, I mean, you took, technically could get three Prismatic Shards out of three Omni Geodes, but <laughs> that's a, a bit wishful thinking, maybe, for, for my sake. E even for me, even for the relentless optimist that I am, I think... Assuming that I can get three prismatic shards from three Omni Geodes is, is a tall ask. You kidding me? Ba that's chat. 
This has to be a sign of a good stream to come. Back-to-back B-Boss -back music right into Pickle Jar Rag. That's never happened before. Can we get some PJR in chat as well? That's that's big. I'm, I'm not much for superstition all the time, but I'm just saying that, feel, that feels like a good sign of things to come. Next goal, craft a furnace. <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, it's it's always possible. All right, let me bring Yon in here. All right, we are. So here is here's what I wanted. Here's my goal. I don't know if we're gonna get here today. Probably not today. Obviously, honestly, but uh, for the end of the year, for the end of this second year of Stardew Valley. I want to get from 81,974 gold. I want this number. This is this is highly ambitious, but I want this to be half a million. I want to get to half a million gold before the end of year two. And now that I've lifted the embargo on selling to shops uh, directly, I think there's maybe a chance we can make that happen. It's highly... It's, it's ambitious, like I said, but half a million... If we can get halfway to what we need for the Desert Obelisk, I think I'll be happy. The new challenge is to build a Desert Obelisk, I know, right? Alright. Let's make some magic happen here. Let's have a look at our Jays. We're at 11 Jays right now. We want to get this up to 50 before we go and tackle Skull Cavern, preferably. Uh, we're going to be checking in with Gus. Hey. Hey, Gus. Guys, don't tell him. Don't, don't say anything. Don't say... Shh, shh, shh. Hey, Gus, is your refrigerator running? Because you better go catch it. Oh, it never gets old. Hash browns. All right, we're waiting on lucky lunch there, preferably. It's Monday. It's the start of a new season. It is a hefty, hefty debris day. The biggest debris that day that ever debrised. I'm going to... So, basically, I'm going to try and speedrun fall as best I can. Speedrun is, is a loose term here. We're not just going to be sleeping the days away. We're going to be taking care of our chores. Namely, I want to get my mushrooms taken care of. I want to pick pick the mushrooms every day because that's good residual income. I want to check the garbages, obviously. Check, the, check for debris on Mondays and check for Queen of Sauce on Sundays. And that's honestly, like, about it. <laughs> First name, Seymour. Last name, Butts. That's a classic. <laughs> that's a very good... That's a very classic. If you hate your life, 200 geodes a day is 10k a day. 560k by the end of winter. I'm thinking winter because now that I've opened... Like I said, I've opened the door to selling directly to shops. Because it'll add a little more variety to the challenge. Um, Winter forage farming. I don't know how good it is. And I've never really done it, like, actively or or intensely. I've never, like, fully focused onto it. But I know that you can get a lot of money from, far from like, hoeing the ground on the beach in the specific right, like, clay farming style pattern and getting uh, getting a bunch of winter forage. I don't know what, what kind of daily profits we're looking at there. But doing that, if we can get, do that for, like, almost every day of winter, I think we'll be looking okay. But, I mean... <laughs> we'll see how it goes. You will see how it goes for sure. Risque. Be lurking at 2 a.m. Oh my gosh. Shoutouts to the 2 a.m. and the 3 a.m. Uh, team. You're the, you're the MVPs. I don't expect anyone to stick around like the entire time. If you stick around from like 3 a.m. to like 6 a.m. or however late this stream is going to go for you, it's like... <laughs> that's wild. Hey there, Zombo. see a cousin of Larry Butts from Ace Attorney. I want to play more of the Ace Attorney games. I played the, uh, what was it? Ace Attorney Justice for All. Is that the second game in the, in the saga? I played that one when I, like when I was younger. A friend introduced me to it and I, I've absolutely fell in love with it at the time, but I've never gone out of my way to play any of the other Ace Attorney games. And I know Professor Layton is in a similar sort of boat genre wise. I feel like I would really like those games as well. All about, you know, the, the puzzle solving and the deduction and the... And it's got a lot of charm, too. At least uh, Phoenix Wright does. It's a, good, it's a good time. I would definitely... I gotta... There's so many games I want to play. 
Bobby is interesting. Thank you for becoming, for becoming a member at the Electron level. I greatly appreciate the generosity and the support. Enjoy your new emotes and your sword. Careful where you swing that thing. Thank you so much. What the heck? Made by the same company. Does Pi love us yet? Pi, do, Pi does love Beatrix. I don't remember exactly when that happened, but we did get the message that, uh, that Pi loves you. Which is, you know, not only is a, is a feel-good moment, feel-good, happy memory for the whole family, but it's also it also does contribute towards Grandpa's Shrine evaluation at the end of this year. I was lo I did look into the um, like the point system for for the shrine and like what it would take to get the Statue of Perfection, which would be a fantastic way to get Iridium. But the like the only way that we can make that happen is if we somehow complete the community center and get that all done, which I don't think is in the cards even remotely so we'll just have to have to struggle bus our way to iridium some other way i guess <laughs> grandpa's just well your cat loves you grandpa always looking on the bright side of life here and that would be assuming that i that i get like a million total earnings by the end of this year which i mean i'm gonna be struggling to get half a million i think a million is like way outside the picture unless i Unless some new intel comes into comes into play here. Just can't get all the fish, period. I can't get the fish. I can't level up. Um, I can't do, like, full shipment or anything like that. I can't... There's there's a lot of stuff I can't do for Grandpa's evaluation. It was a, it was a sobering moment when I went to that wiki page, and I'm like, how bad could it be? And I'm like, oh, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. There's just no way to go about it. Every way, the Sunday, we're not getting that Iridium statue. At least not yet. We can always reevaluate later. We uh, sacrifice a diamond to our grandfather. Don't know. Don't know what the connotations of that are necessarily. He's I don't know what he's doing with the diamonds, but definitely starting to feel a little bit of the of the claustrophobia of my farm now. There's a lot of stones, and it's 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 very labyrinthine now. And normally I'm a fan of labyrinths. I like mazes on the on the whole, but when it's a, a maze that I don't that it is not guaranteed to have a solution, <laughs> that's when things start to get a little dicey. I'm not so not so fond of that. I want my problems to be solvable. Not like that like one viral Chinese math problem. What was it's like a how does it go? It's like a ship is, you know, the cargo of a ship consists of 26 goats and 10 cows. Uh, how old is the ship's captain? That wasn't that that was a that was a question on like a test in a Chinese in like a in China like in like a math test at some point. I remember hearing about that a while back. If you have all goals met, you need to sacrifice a diamond. It didn't used to be that way, too. It's like uh, you used to not be able to reevaluate at Grandpa's Shrine at all. I'm pretty sure. Like if you just didn't, if you didn't have things done by by the time the first evaluation rolled around, you were just kind of out of luck. I'm pretty sure. But I'm gonna go deposit this. Then I will check. I think we've done a pretty good job clearing the farm of debris. Although I might. Uh... Oh, we're full on wooden here. Okay, that's. Uh... I... Well, I don't know why this trial bite's sticking around. I think you can just get gone, honestly. Put in there. Is there anything else I can get rid of here? Probably, but I mean, we'll we'll do some cleaning of the house. You know what? I don't really care for any of this. I don't really care for the clay, honestly. I can get a lot of clay very fast if I need to. Mix seeds, take it or leave it. I could like bring these to the respective people and like sell them for some money, but really just not worth it to me. Hey there, Safira. Welcome on in. What the heck kind of question is that? I think the question was supposed to, like, make you think, like, there's not enough information here to solve it, and that's supposed to be the answer in and of itself, but people tried. Be people, because people are persistent and stubborn, and they will try. 
if given the opportunity. As long as you can remember, since at least 1.2 it reevaluated every year. I know it it was like a, an early update for sure. Like it's been like that for probably the entire time that I've been playing. I think I started playing in 1.3, maybe 1.2. It'd be hard to say, but I just want to double check because I feel like I didn't do that good of a job of clearing this particular area. Near, uh, near Hootie and Chicken, how are you guys doing? Best buddy cop duo of all time. Hey there, Joe Christopher. Welcome on into the stream. I think that's probably good enough now. I think that's that's the only thing that was picking at my brain to go and check again. And welcome back, Zomba. I didn't realize you'd left. <laughs> but welcome on back. Happy to have you here. One of your personal goals in every game is to have the right score so Grandpa is happy and you don't need a reevaluation. It's not that hard to do. I mean, it's it takes a lot of effort. I don't want to downplay the effort that it takes to get a good evaluation from Grandpa. But if you're just playing the game casually, no restrictions, it's it should be relatively doable. Um... If, if you know what you're striving for. If you don't know, like, the evaluation's even coming up. If you're playing Stardew completely blind, which is such a foreign concept to me at this point that it's, you know, almost laughable. But there are people out there who would play it blind and have no idea what the heck's going on. People who wouldn't even know the shrine exists. <laughs> Your PC was having a heart attack. That's, I mean, that doesn't sound good. Glad you're back, though. My PC's been known to do that from time to time. You on your first Switch game? Did you, pl did you first start playing Stardew on the Switch, or did you, like, play on PC before then? I have Stardew on the Switch, but I've only ever tried playing it, like, one time, and it was, you know... Just didn't feel right. After playing for so many hours on PC, it's hard to go to anything else. Because just like the the mobility allowed by a mouse and keyboard and stuff. It's unparalleled. Alright, I think we're good there. I don't think there will be any debris anywhere else. I'll check down just to be on the safe side. Stardew feels so pure on the Switch. I mean, there's no way to get mods or anything on the Switch. I think a lot of the glitches and stuff don't work on the Switch, because, like, Nintendo kind of cracks down on that stuff, right? So, like, uh, Concerned Ape had to, like, patch... I think, like, the, the item ID exploit, where you, like, name yourself a certain thing. Open bracket 709, close bracket, open bracket 262, close bracket. That one? I don't think that works on the Switch, does it? Best problem ever on Switch for 1.5 was Ginger Island all blue. All blue. Well, like it was like the like it was just all blue. <laughs> like, like the color. It was all blue. I didn't hear about that. That sounds like a weird glitch. Joja Mart overtaking Ginger Island. Joja Island? Oh, let's never wish that into existence. Alright, I think we're good. Joja Island sounds like the worst reality TV show of all time, for the record. All the main level was water, made life pretty hard, I would imagine. Alright, Gus, what do you got for me today? Fried eel. Chat, is fried eel a luck-boosting food? Something in my brain is telling me that it is. Maybe it's just because spicy eel is a luck-boosting food and I'm conflating the two. Maybe eels are, are naturally lucky within the Stardew Echelon. I don't know. Would someone be able to fact check that one for me? Because I wouldn't mind check. I wouldn't... If I can't get... I mean, I'll take any luck boosting food that I can get. Just luck? I mean, that's fine. Luck is the main thing that we're looking for when it comes to our Skull Cavern grind. The speed is inconsequential. It is luck plus one? Okay. I should probably take advantage of that then. So I think we're going to go ahead and have to wait for um, 
wait for the place to open today. Which means I'm going to go ahead and deposit stuff here just so I can I can sell some of this stuff to Pierre. Because if I'm going to be waiting around in town anyway, I might as well. Hold on. That's important to me. Um, yeah, if I'm going to be waiting around in town, I might as well bring this to sell to Pierre. Current plan is money, Joja, obelisk, right? We actually don't need to take the Jojera because uh, last time we gained access to the sewers and we used the chair to uh, the skip skippity doo -dah our way into the mutant bug layer and unlock the obelisks that way. So we actually were able to build the obelisk once we have the, the funds and the materials to do so. So really the iridium bars and the money are the main things standing in my way right now. Frozen tier to put on my shelf? No, I don't think I will. Bugs Bunny voice. Yeah, it's very rare that, like, clipping into the mutant bug layer that way would actually have any kind of uh, tangible benefit for most people, I think. <laughs> Even in, like, most challenge runs, it doesn't... It's not that imperative to gain access to the wizard's buildings that early, but in our particular case, it actually works out quite nicely. Do I think I'll be forced to go Jojo Red or be able to complete the community center? I would say there's like a 90% chance that, I can, that I'll have to do the Jojo Mart route. I just want to see. I'm going to go talk to Clint just to keep our friendship okay. <laughs> keep, it, keep him within, you know, that one heart range without actually exceeding one heart. I can grind crates on level one of Skull Cavern for the lucky ring. That's true. Yeah, getting a lucky ring would actually be quite helpful. Looking good. What's the confusion, Lisa? Is it about the, the desert obelisk? <laughs> or clipping to the mutant bug layer? It was a whole big thing last stream. I mean, it happened so fast, it was a blink and you miss it kind of moment, but, but we did get into the mutant bug layer that way. All right. Good afternoon, sir. Please take my peaches. Sell the peaches. Sell the oranges. We don't sell the blackberries. Sell these common mushrooms. Not bad. Decent little chunk of change. Every little bit's gonna help as we as we climb towards our goal. I almost want to set up like a. Uh, <laughs> I almost want to set up a you know one of those like fundraiser like thermometer type things. Where, like, you color in the thermometer as it rises closer and closer to the goal. That would be fun to do for, like, our money goal here. I guess I'll go around and collect all the stuff that was... I didn't have room for in my inventory. All this trash. Don't want it littering about. Got woken up by the very loud yelling at the end. <laughs> my bad. My bad. I do get a little loud sometimes, like that one song. Let's get loud. Oh, you need to complete the community center and unlock the quest from the wizard? You do to unlock the quest, but you don't actually need the quest active in order to do the quest, as hilarious as that might sound. Once you have the Dark Talisman from the Mutant Bug Layer, it just lets you into the Witch's Swamp and you can just proceed from there, basically. Just got 25k from Winter Forge farming, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. eating five salads on the way, and this was me ending the with ending the farming at 5 p.m. in one day. Basic 6-4 pattern and only knowing the three left, two up replacement. Sounds like about where I'm at, Alex. So it's a <laughs> thank you for doing the uh, empirical testing there. Hopefully, hopefully I can I can match that number. If I can get 25k in a day, I mean, that's... Uh, <laughs> and do that for, like, all of winter, or for, like, most of winter, then we be looking pretty. You can just give the ink to the wizard now and you unlock his shop. I'll, I'll do you one better. I've already given the ink to the wizard and unlocked his shop. 
We just took the shortcut straight from the witch's swamp there, gave it to him, and it was it was a very confusing scenario because he was talking about stuff that he'd never mentioned before. All right, fried eel. We're gonna take. We're gonna buy all three of these. Just the plus one luck bonus. It might not be that important, but every little bit's gonna help. So yeah, the the desert obelisk is ready and waiting. I mean, it's just a, that it's you know. We got a few more things to take care of before we can actually build it, unfortunately. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Not as daunting of a goal as it might have once seemed. Like it's it's still a it's still a hefty second goal for for for, uh, for the randomizer here, but it's not that bad. All right. Plan for the Iridium right now, that's what we're harvesting these jades for. Um, we want to go through Skull Cavern via staircases, so we trade the jade for staircases. And then we hope for Iridium bars out of Skull Cavern treasure rooms, basically. Or, if we happen to get an iron bar, we can get our hands on a furnace, smelt our Iridium ourselves, and uh, that would be the other way to do that. It's not, you know, an ironclad plan, and it's certainly not a fast plan, but it is a plan, and it's the plan that uh, that we're going to go with. Yeah, coconut and cactus fruits are just, just sold at Sandy's, thankfully. We actually bought our cactus fruit just the other day. Taking care of business every day, every week. Hey there, Power Raptor. did the math. R slash they did the math. Hold on a second. I'm just going to get my tools back out. Actually, I'll put this there. That's it's The star shards are more of a tool than the blackberries are. Did the math, and it's going to take a bit over an in-game month to get all the jades I need for 50 staircases with only two crystallariums. I mean, it's better than one crystallarium. <laughs> and real realistically, we don't have ways to get more crystallariums other than Skull Caverns itself, so it's a bit of a catch-22 there. Considering that's your goal, that's a relatively fast plan. I mean, when we got nothing else to focus on. I am curious, do you think it's going to take more stream time to get the Desert Obelisk than it did to befriend the Dwarf? Or do you think it'll take less stream time? I think, it honestly, it might take less stream time overall. I don't know about, like, full play time because of the geode farming that goes on in between sometimes, but as far as, like, actual streams, I think we'll be done faster than the, uh, than the, than the dwarf, which is kind of, like, sobering to think about, that, <laughs> that we were able to, you know, that we'll be able to build the desert obelisk faster than befriending the dwarf from, like, nothing. Mainly just because of the dwarf scrolls, I guess, but... Two crystallariums is twice as good as one. It's all about those proportions, baby. It's like how, you know, if there's if there's one lion versus two lions, probably going to take, want to take the situation with one lion, but if there's 98 lions versus 99 lions, bit of a toss-up at that point. Still just one lion, but you know. <laughs> Same goes for crystallariums. Okay, quick check-in with the Queen of Sauce, just in case. Omelette du fromage. Did I get Clint to break open all the geodes from last stream? I believe most of them, yeah. Yeah, in fact, all of them. I thought there might have been still been, like, an Omni Geode or something in here. You know what? I might as well... I could hold on to the jades. I might as well just hold on to the jades for right now. Actually, nah. Kind of like keeping them in the fridge there. Keep them cool and fresh and ready to go. Something about a, a cold rock on a warm day. Rubbing it against your face. Oh my gosh. I am very pro cold pillows. Like, honestly, on the average night of sleep, I will probably, like, like as I'm lying there trying to fall asleep, I will probably flip my pillow over, like, at least, at, at the very least once, but probably, like, twice or three times as I try to fall asleep, 
just to keep that consistent, like, coldest possible temperature against my cheek. Oh, it is... I, I there's, just, there's just something so good about that feeling. Why am I keeping the Star Shard in my inventory? It's a lucky charm. It's Beatrix's lucky charm. It's brought us fantastic luck so far, and I'm hoping that it'll pull through for, you know, an iron bar or something like that. How's the weather? Is this a joke about my height? How's the weather up there? Even though I'm not tall in the slightest. <laughs> I didn't turn off ads. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start embracing who I am as a as a YouTuber, and enjoy and you know, it's gonna be an uncomfortable learning curve. But I saw the ad notification and I was like, you know what? Let's let's let it ride, see how it goes. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Hopefully, not too many people get uh, get ads. But honestly, I mean, if it was if it was a more if it, if it was a more eventful sort of stream right now, right now we're in the in the doldrums of the grind. Heavy cactus fruit energy out of uh, out of these streams probably for the next little bit, or at least out of this stream. As in the cactus fruit streams from from Rise of Perfection. But yeah, I'm okay with running with running a few ads here and there for them. Weather where I live, it's been like fluctuating between rain and sun all day today. It's like scattered sun showers, I guess you would classify it as. You're 5'11", which is tall for non-men. I'm I'm like 5'9". I'm short. <laughs> I'm short as far as uh as far as my 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 demographic standard height. Tell the Joja Cola. Got to got to put the. Got to stick it to the man somehow, right? Yeah, take that. You know, resell your your, sti your silly little soft drink. You take that. <laughs> I was trying to think of a good uh, good insult for the Joja Cola, but Joja Cola itself is an insult enough, I would imagine. Fried eel. We already got three fried eels. I'm not gonna, you know, belabor the point too much here and try and get any more. If it was like Lucky Lunch or something like that, something that has a, a significantly higher luck buff, I think it would only be Lucky Lunch at that point. I don't think there's any foods that have other luck buffs. Maybe, I don't know. And there's like Magic Rock Candy, there's the fried eel, there's Lucky Lunch. What else gives luck buffs? I'm sure maybe if I saw it as it appeared at the Sardoff Saloon, I'd, I would know, but. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Pumpkin soup, maybe? Catch the VOD. Don't care for the ads during live feeds since it doesn't pause what you're doing. That's fair. <laughs> that is understandable. Pumpkin soup, spicy eel, I guess. Yeah, spicy eel is one. I mean, I just, I just kind of lumped the spicy eel and the fried eel all in the same, uh, in the same boat there. Both eels. What is it with the like eel-like creatures that give, uh, give luck though? Because the lucky lunch is like sea cucumber based, right? Which isn't an eel, I know. It's a, it's a sea cucumber, but. <laughs> Oh, don't apologize for the weather question. That was fine. OMG, it's B Matrix. O OMG, it's Wickedy. How you doing, Wickedy? Long time no see. Haven't been able to catch any of your streams lately. I've been, you know, been I've been lifing it up. I guess I guess you could say adulting and lifing and all that good stuff. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you, my friend. We should make happy birthday a meme. You can't force you can't force a good meme. Memes have to the best memes have to occur, occur organically. We don't uh, we don't do GMMs here. Not good mythical morning, but genetically modified memes. 
We're all about those organically farmed memes. Happy birthday, Argon. I mean, you can you can keep trying. I don't know if it's going to stick, but... <laughs> Both, rest, both eel recipes come from George's friendship, which is interesting. Chat, what do sea cucumbers do in, like, real life? Like, because I know sea cucumbers are, like, an actual thing that exists in real life. But I don't know, like, what they're... Like, do they, like, filter stuff out? Because, like, everything, every, everything tends to serve a purpose in uh, an ecosystem. But I don't know... Like, sea cucumbers, they just kind of, like, sit there, right? Eggplant Parmesan? That's a that's defense bonus, I think. Or defense buff. Need to worry about that. Life stuff is a thing we gotta do, ain't it the truth? <laughs> Whether we like it or not, life just keeps on coming. Living loofah, sea cucumbers exist. You heard GMM and your brain immediately went to Gaussian mixture models. Zafira, you live you live in a very niche headspace, I think. <laughs> I've never heard of that in my life. The only Gaussian thing I know is like Gaussian there's like Gaussian distribution and there's Gaussian blur that you that I use in like videos and editing sometimes. Wanted one fresh lobster beast for I'm creating. Ooh, Gus, proprietor of the Stardrop Saloon, reward 800G. Do you think he gave this out, he sent this mail? Because this is not a very personalized letter. He probably sent it out to every single person in town, hoping that he would get like 30 lobsters if everyone contributed. I like Gus, and but and you know what? He's a shrewd businessman. I, I gotta hand it to him. Even though, I, have I ever met Gus yet? I have met Gus. When did I meet Gus? I don't. I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I mean, I know I bought stuff from him at the saloon, but that doesn't constitute meeting usually. Don't they throw up their insides and suck them back in? To, to what benefit, though? I phone him regularly. Oh, did I? I think I forgot to phone him today too. Actually, thankfully, the phoning does not uh, doesn't get us any friendship points. Have we bonded over a trash can? I don't think trash cans count as meeting either, though. I'm trying to think of... Uh, there must have, there must have been a reason, or, or maybe not. I mean, I've met Haley. There's no reason for that. Other than that, you know, I like her personally. Beatrix barely knows her. Spoke to her one time on a, on a whim from on high. It's the prank calls. <laughs> I, ba I barely even actually ever ever actually get to talk to Gus though. Like it's all every time I call it's so early in the morning, it's like his answering machine. Do you think he gets annoyed that I'm that I call literally every single morning at like six ten a.m. <laughs> and like leave it leave a mess or I, I probably don't even leave a message. I literally just call to hear the daily special on the answering machine and then, and then I hang up. And like nine times out of ten, I don't even show up later in the day. <laughs> Oh god, I didn't even think about what a bad patron I am for, for Gus. He's an understanding fellow though. And you know what he kinda deserves it for making me wait that one time when he had to go to the, like the doctor's office, so. Allie, thank you for being a member for 13 months. Lucky number 13. Good to see you as well. We bonded over trash cans in 20 in 2022, price per faction trash life. Trash gang, rise up. Raise your hand if you were here for the 5,000 trash grind to find the cactus fruit. I would raise my hand, but I don't know if I was fully there for it, to be honest with you. At a certain point, I feel like I started to check out and become a very, like, medit- I entered, like, a very meditative state. And then when the cactus fruit actually showed up, it was like, it was like a dream-like moment. <laughs> oh, we got a lot of OGs in here, though. Go to sleep for the night, I think we're good. And hey, if you weren't here for that, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. You're here now, and that's what counts. And we've got another trash grind on our hands right now. 
We're not actively, it's, it's not like the only thing we're looking for, but getting that iron bar from a trash can is, uh, would, would be very, very nice. <laughs> ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Does anyone actually scream for ice cream, though? I guess, the, I guess like, kids can scream for ice cream sometimes. They'll see, like, the ice cream truck and be like, ice cream! Yo, we've actually got a path here now. Next to that little little log right there, there's a, there's a path without the chair. Do ice cream trucks still, like, exist? I feel like I've asked this question before, but I don't remember if I got if I got an answer. It's one of those questions that, you know, pops into my head, or maybe I'm thinking of the milkman discussion. I feel I feel like I haven't seen an ice cream truck. Like I used to hear them like going around the neighborhood every so often, like maybe like once every like two months kind of thing. I'd I'd hear one the the telltale the telltale song of the ice cream truck. It's mating call. But I haven't heard it in a, in a very long time. Maybe because of like uh, because of the pandemic. It would make a lot of sense now that I think about it. But I guess you know that's that's that time is reasonably behind us now. We have one that drives by here, but you live near a school. I also live near a school, actually. OMG school neighbors. What was the question? <laughs> Are there? Do ice cream trucks still exist? And can and follow up question: Can you still buy the the SpongeBob ice cream sticks from from the trucks? Because that's the only thing I remember. I think I've frequented like you know one or two ice cream trucks ever in my life, but I still have a distinct memory of seeing like the the SpongeBob shaped like ice lollies or whatever they are that have like you know they're so like <laughs> it's like because like they're usually like a little bit melted by the time you actually like get it so because they're going out on a hot day and like it, i don't know i don't know how it happens or they're just like not made properly or something but it, <laughs> they have a vague resemblance to, to mr square pants but the eyes the eyes are always the thing that stick out in my head there's always like a, one saggy eye Depend on the wholesaler that works with the truck. Fair. Here's this Captain American ones. They look so bad, but taste so sugar. I mean, the sugar taste can't be beat. Reason that sh that sugar is so all over the place. But anything that's too saccharine, that's like too too much, has too hefty of a taste of sugar. Not for me. Case in point, perfect, perfect case study. Regular Coca-Cola. I'm, a, I'm a Diet Coke fan myself. I'm not a regular Coca-Cola fan because it literally just tastes like liquid sugar, and it's too much for me. I just, I can't do it. Good, right? Did I get Queen of Sauce? I did. It was fruit salad. All right. Semi regular paranoid check to make sure I haven't accidentally sold anything. And we're back on Debris Day. Welcome back to Debris Day, everybody. We got some blackberries here. I'm not going to go super out of my way to get, to like, do the full blackberry hunt and, and go through the whole rigmarole of blackberry season, necessarily. We've, are, we've still got a lot left over from our previous season. I mean, yeah, these blackberries, they're only a year old, right? They're still probably good. They've just been sitting, like, in my pockets for the past year. <laughs> Anyone else been carrying around 150 blackberries in their pockets for a year? Or just Beatrix? In her skirt pocket, too. Gotta be some kind of world record there. Hope you're doing well, Pi. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go do the garbage cans and then do the debris. Oh, it's like a Mary Poppins bag. So true. Pockets oh, full of hammer space and like a bag of holding in there. 
thought I was trying to make money right now. Uh, the main money maker is going to be during the winter. It's going to be during winter when we can do some winter winter forge farming. I could do some money making in fall here. I could do like just some regular old clay farming or geode farming or something like that. But I feel like we're going to be able to make like so much in winter. It just behooves us to get there as fast as possible. And then I'll try and make up whatever I can um, or whatever I need to after that. We'll see, we'll, see, we'll see where we land at the end of winter basically is my plan right now. Pocket Fruit makes great slingshot ammo for making friends. Do you just, like, pull out your slingshot and go, Hey! Hey, Shane, open wide! And he's like, what? And then he just, you just bean him in the face with a with a cherry or whatever you're carrying around. Just, just a black, big old year, old year old blackberry smooshes him in the face. And then he's like, blackberry is my favorite. How'd you know? Yeah, winter makes 5x gold compared to non-winter. That sounds about right. Speedrunners hate this one weird trick. Blackberry. I don't think I've ever tried diet soda, but you're not big, a big soda drinker in general. I'm bad. I drink too much soda. I, I've tried to dial it back a little bit. You know, which I was I was just taking a drink of my soda right there. <laughs> One thing I looked into getting, this is uh, you know, I mean, YouTube sponsorships are are very frequent these days. So it's it's rare to go watch like a video from a, a an established YouTuber that is not sponsored these days, and I'm I'm all for it, you know, get that bag. Um most of the time the sponsorships do not work on me. I, I very rarely hear about something that, you know, I want to actively look into getting for myself. The one sponsored thing that has, that has caught my interest is the one they do on Game Theory sometimes, over on the Game Theorists. It's like, I think it's called Air Up. This is not sponsored, by the way. This is just me talking about something that sounds interesting to me. But it's like a water bottle that has like a a, a spot where you can attach like these, uh, these bespoke scent pods. To make the water taste like like whatever you're smelling, like there's like different like fr fruit scented ones, so you like push it up to your nose, and you uh, and then you can drink it. But you're, and even though you're just drinking water, it tastes like you're drinking something else. And I really like that idea because it's like using using science to trick your brain into being healthier. And I think I could. I think it's something that I would personally very much appreciate in my life. I think I think it would definitely work on me. I feel like my sense of smell is significantly stronger than my sense of taste, and obviously they're very heavily linked, those two. But I looked into getting one of those, like, uh, the era bottles and, like, the, the pods and stuff, and they're not available in Canada, and a single tear rolled down my cheek. I'm like, come on. Hopefully they'll expand before too long. At least they weren't available in Canada when I checked. Maybe they're, they're expanding fast and, and frivolously. Is there a bacon one? You know, I I mean, I was so upset at the at the lack of availability to my country. I didn't even look. The only ones I know of are the ones they talk about during those like sponsored segments, which are the only one I remember right now is like a wild berry one. You don't really trust those much. TBH, you never tried. I mean, my me as a as a man of science, self-proclaimed. Um, I'm well aware that at, at, at how heavily linked taste and smell are. So it's, and when I heard about that, I was like, that seems like something that would, that would work wonders. Because I've never been a huge fan of, like, drinking water, unless I'm, like, you know, I've just gone for, like, a long walk or a run or something, and your body needs the water and is craving the water. That's different. That's a different story. Then it tastes like heaven. But... Just on its own, water, it's never really never really done it for me. I don't hate it, but I don't, you know, go out of my way to drink it as often as I nearly as often as I should, really. There is not a bacon one. 
someone someone get on that though. Fix it, come on. Only bacon flavored water, just like you're drinking bacon grease straight out of the pan. But with with none of the adverse health health side effects. You know what? That sounds alright to me. Cholesterol levels won't spike to like 10 billion. The gal of science, whenever any advertisement claims to be using science, they're lying to you. But I mean, like, the science in this case is so simple, they can't really be lying about it. They're literally like, hey, smell this while you're drinking water and it'll taste different. And that's just, that's just how, like, taste works in general. Like, I've, like, I feel like I'm not crazy to say that, like, things taste different to me depending on the ambient smells of the environment. And that's why, you know, foods with a strong, like, odor, like a strong pungency or a strong aroma to them have a stronger taste a lot of the time to me because, like, the the, the sense of smell factors in so greatly. You'll concede this one advertising claim. <laughs> but yeah, I feel, I find it would be hard to, you know, I mean... It's, it's such a simple concept to me that it's like, what could they possibly be lying about? Do the things not actually smell like anything at all? In which case, you know, it'd be probably pretty easy to prove the negative, right? You could just sniff stickers while drinking water. That's true, but I mean, having a having a company do it for me to, you know, I'll, I'll pay a convenience fee. I really will. In this world of convenience that we currently live in, I think, uh, I think convenience fees are are okay in my book a lot of the time. Not for everything. And I know that's a problem on my part. Like, you know, I, I definitely should just, you know, get one of those scratch and stiff, sniff stickers out of the, like, the Earthbound Nintendo Power magazine. Scratch and sniff it before I drink my water, make it taste like vomit or something. Isn't that what those those were like? They had like a Earthbound had that weird scratch and sniff campaign where they had stickers that smelled like garbage and vomit. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking back then. I guess it was the whole '90s era of like gross out humor. But can I ask how you don't gain XP from that cockle? Uh, it's I honestly have no idea. <laughs> It, it's it's one of the great mysteries, Wickedy. Yeah, we've got no farming experience. Where does it tell me my foraging? Zero, fo zero foraging experience. Basically, foraging stuff on the beach farm does not yield foraging experience unless it's in the shipping collection. So the cockle being in the fishing collection does not yield foraging experience. Why that exactly works that way? Couldn't tell you. I haven't dug into the code to, to find that one out myself. But uh, that's just the way it works, and I'm okay for it because it saves me having to, you know... That it actually allows me to com complete most of the Crab Pot Bundle. Um, actually, have I done that yet? Have I donated the things I need to to the Crab Pot Bundle? Um, I haven't, so maybe I'll save one of these. Maybe save some stuff just to complete this when I get the chance. I'll still be, like, one thing short. Till I, unless I get the chance to, like, catch a crab or, or something of that ilk, but... Wonder if it's because you already have a fishing skill. I have some fishing experience right now. Um, now that I've caught the I caught the void mayonnaise last stream for the uh, goblin problem quest and all that stuff. So I have some fishing experience, and even still, it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's if you've caught those specific fish before. I don't know. I I need to do more more testing to really give you a definitive answer. Paging Doctor Blade. <laughs> Congrats, Blade. All right. Three day is feeling pretty complete to me. A few more pieces over here and we'll be good to go. same way that killing monsters on the farm doesn't give combat XP. It feels like in a similar boat, right? 
Like, I can't get that coral because that's part of the shipping collection. But if there was, like, a mussel or something here, or another cockle or whatever, then it would be fine. But it, fe it feels more arbitrary than the, than the just, like, blanket statement of killing monsters on the farm does not yield combat experience. This one's more selective, which, which intrigues me for sure. Either way, I'm glad for it. I'm glad that is a mechanic that I can use. My, uh... My advantage here. Alright, we'll store the cockle in here for right now. Got some triple shot as well. But I can sell this field snack. Why can't I get the coral? Because the coral will give me seven foraging experience because it's in the shipping collection rather than the fishing collection. Come on, you guys gotta keep up. You gotta keep up with this stuff. It is going to be on the exam. Midterms are coming up, you guys. Midterms for the randomized perfection. I hope you guys have been studying. It's like, uh, it's next week. We got midterms, and these all these questions are going to be on there. And don't give me these excuses. Oh, Mr. Matrix, Mr. Matrix, you've put, you've put out, you know, 20 plus hours of VODs in the past couple weeks. How are we supposed to, you know, have a good work-life balance? And study for our midterms when there's so much content coming out. And I'm like, you know what? Figure it out. I'm not your teacher. I'm just a streamer. What were we talking about again? Guardi Valley Fair. I regret to inform you, Mr. Lewis. I'm probably not going to be taking, partaking in that. What even is a midterm? It is the, uh, the exams... You take in the middle of your school term. But the free scarecrow? I guess I could get a free scarecrow. Or, I mean, not a free scarecrow. I got to get star tokens for it, I suppose, but... Really, you'd love to take a midterm again? I'm kind of with you. I kind of like taking tests. I know that a lot of people get, like, test anxiety, and it depends on the tests, too, for sure. But I, I feel like I'm a good tester. When it comes to, like, at least the maths and the sciences, those ones that have, you know, like, definitive... Ooh, pardon me. That have, like, definitive right and wrong answers most of the time. Whereas with, like, you know, English and stuff, it and it where it's more, uh more ambiguous how well you did, and it's, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm I'm a big fan of writing, I love writing, but when I'm being tested on my writing, it feels like, like the pressure is on too much, I don't like that feeling. But it's similar to how I like, you know, trivia and stuff. Our tokens are free, you get your first ones from Lewis and then Gamble. You're so, you're so right. So right. Gambling is the way. Although I don't know how... Uh, I feel like Beatrix isn't as uh, gung-ho about gambling on the wheel as Chloe was. You gotta remember, Beatrix is carving her own identity out here. Just because I'm the, I'm the same pilot controlling both of their fates, so to speak. Doesn't mean Beatrix doesn't have her own, uh, her own works about her. Always bet on orange. Don't, don't seed these false thoughts. Don't seed these false thoughts. Although, I mean, if you rolled, like, three of green in a row. You know, we don't have to go. <laughs> on. Skip the ads this time. In Canada, do you also have written slash multiple choice choice tests like in the U.S.? Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a variety of different uh, testing formats. I usually either multiple choice or like short response or like essay answers and stuff that that sort of stuff. I haven't been like in a school setting in a very long time. Do Scantron still exist? Those little, like, pieces of paper that are so thin, they're, like, because they're, like, graphite-based or whatever, and you, like, gotta, like, 
color in the little boxes on a long sheet, and then they like feed it into a machine to mark it somehow. Are Scantrons still the go-to format for, for testing? Salmon dinner, no thank you. Unfortunately, yes. What do you mean, unfortunately? Scantrons are awesome. <laughs> I love Scantrons. I love filling out those little things. It feels so satisfying every time. Like, filling in the boxes and... Oh. I don't know what people have against Scantrons. I've, I've always loved them. You had a star shard in your pocket last stream and it brought you luck. Must be a hidden mechanic. Wickety. We're uncovering the truth. Ever, everyone's underrated the star shards. They're like just, you know, tolerating it because I'm like a weird guy. And I'm I, if I say, you know, the star shards bring me luck, they'll be like, okay, Argon's going to be Argon, whatever. But I'm, I, I have, I, I think there's more to it than that. I think the star shards, I think there's really something there. Has anyone looked into the code? Isn't there like a situation where holding a rabbit's foot in your inventory can like, like changes your luck or something? I don't remember the exact specifics, but I think there is a... Uh, there's at least, like, one situation where that comes into play, right? They're too easy to grade. But Scantrons, don't you want them to be easy to grade? To, like, get through, like, as many of them as fast as possible? Museum Grack Reads, thank you for the 99 cent super sticker once again, looking like a diamond or a frozen tear in the rough. Crystal fabled to be the frozen tears of a Yeti, found in Jody's garbage can, tossed haphazardly to the side. How would that Yeti feel about it? The Yeti already cried once, Jody. And then you're going to throw their tears in the, in the literal garbage? Poor shame. If you're date, oh yeah, that's when the rabbit's foot thing happens, right? It's if you're dating everybody all at once and you have that cutscene. The first time, it's it's the it's the first. You know, I was talking about it earlier in the stream. This is our first duplicate. This that could have been an iron bar. That could have been an iron bar. Well, chalk it up. Write write one down. <laughs> Put one on the prison tally. That's our first duplicate there. It was it was bound to happen, you know. It was it's to be expected mathematically that we would get one duplicate before we get the iron bar. But say la vie, I'm not gonna harp on it too much as long as it doesn't happen, you know, like two, three, four, five, eight more times. Be okay. Be okay. I will heart you forever if you bring me a walleye. Who is this girl and what has she done with Haley? Gold bar. What should I do with this gold bar? I guess I should just hold on to it for now. It'll probably be, probably come in useful in the future, maybe. It's the dwarf scrolls all over again. It's real. Really, it's the cactus root all over again. I still have nightmares of getting you know the sandfish and the coconuts and the and the scorpion carps. It was not the best of luck. Sure. Table gold. We already got table gold. Table gold prime, and now we got got some gold in the fridge as well. If I, if I could put them both on the table, you know I would. You know I would. The 22 jades. We're cruising. Fridge gold? No, fridge cold. I think you're confused. Why does everyone except Penny love rabbit's feet? It sounds kind of gross. Uh, I mean, rabbit's feet are, are meant to be good luck. Don't ask me why a rabbit's foot is good luck. I'm with you. It sounds, like, gross. I would not want, you know, a, a rabbit's amputated foot as, like, a necklace or anything. If it was, like, you know, just, like, a little, like, plush rabbit's foot, I'd be, like, give me the whole rabbit at that point. I'd, like, I feel like a whole rabbit is going to be luckier than just the foot. But maybe like maybe it's like an Achilles heel sort of situation where all of the where Achille, all of Achilles' weakness was you know suffused into his one heel, all of the rabbit's luck is suffused into its foot.
You got the task to sell coconut in this kind of a gold mine with Ginger Island. I could see that, yeah. These super meals. Super meals are underrated. 40 plus max energy. They restore a good amount of energy. You get plus one speed. Like, the speed buff is, like, pretty good. Why don't people talk about these things more? I guess, you know, the, the max energy buff is not that useful in, in a lot of situations, but it's kind of nice when you have, you know, no star drops to your name, I suppose. <laughs> Just fascinated by what lizard powers Marnie's rabbits have that they can drop their feet. It's a fantasy world. I mean, there's 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 dwarves and shadow people and, and dragons and all sorts of things. Who's to say that the rabbits can't, you know, molt? Started in like the 1800s, people thought that rabbits were witches and they could trap their power. So they trap their power in the foot. And then they keep the foot and they, I don't know, what do they do? I guess they would just kill the rabbit and like... Eat it, <laughs> presumably. Like if I if I were living in the 1800s and I thought a rabbit was a witch, I'm thinking I'm like I don't know where the the thought process to chop off its foot comes into play at all. I feel like I'm just like killing the rabbit and eating it to like absorb its energy, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm the fool. 1800s were a weird time, man. I know I was there. It was a it was a strange time. I tell you, it was a hard time finding anywhere to have Wi-Fi. Other than like the secret underground like time traveler respites, it's you know you're you're living you're living in a tough time. Rabbits were a very common source of food for almost all of history. That sounds about right. Like rabbits and potatoes. Potatoes are, are a big one, too, because, like, they're pretty easy to grow, right? Am I immortal or time traveler or both? That is up to personal interpretation. I'm, I'm pleading the fifth, even though it's not a thing I can technically do. The jades have lined up. The, the jades are now synchronized. Feels better. Hold on, we gotta call Gus. My bad. I, think I, I feel like I've been forgetting. No, I don't want to call Cancel. I want to call Gus. Ash Browns. Ash Browns, they provide a buff, right? It's like a farming buff or something. I don't think that's that interesting to me. He'll plead the fifth as a Canadian citizen if I'm being tried in U.S. court. Do you speak from experience, Spooky? Do you have something you'd like to tell the class? Kid? Probably shouldn't. <laughs> Please plead the fifth! Plead the fifth right now! I'm just thinking, is there a good reason to get, like, a farming skill buff? any point in the future. I'm racking my brain thinking of when that could potentially be useful. I guess, like, I would want a farming skill buff if I had Junimo huts that were, then I was trying to get the quality crops for the quality crops bundle at the community center. Because I think the quality of those crops, even though the Junimos are the one harvesting them, would still come into, my, far my farming level would still come into play there, right? I mean, that's so far down the line that I'm not going to worry about it at this exact moment. <laughs> Especially because hash browns, I'm pretty sure they go like a plus one farming boost. You can get like a farmer's lunch or something, that'd be even better. Although, I don't know if that's available from, uh, not. Something tells me no. For girls only, I need a gold bar. <laughs> well, what fortuitous timing, Haley. You know, if I was allowed to like befriend people, I, this, this would actually be kind of tempting. Although, I guess I wouldn't get a full heart from that, so that'd be okay, but... I don't know, it feels like the universe is speaking to me with that one. <laughs> but I feel... I, I don't know, it seems like, you know... 
gold bars. Actually, their gold bars are one of, are the easiest easiest bar for us to come across right now because we can get them from tilling in the mines, right? So I could get some some money from that. Theory. Wouldn't need to ask if you just looked in the trash. So true. Finally, someone says it. I don't know what these people are doing. They're not searching the trash every single day, throwing out gold bars left, right, and center. What are they? What? They're sitting on a gold mine, literally. Do it anyway, please. <laughs> mm, no. Gold bars when tilling in the mines. It's it's like a I don't I don't remember exactly where. Like I think it's probably like deep in the mines, right? But you definitely can. I remember that. Forty-one to eighty. Yeah, that's right. That it is. It, it's weird because like that's not when like gold is even like around. It's just, I don't know. Turn Dave just felt like being a little, little quirky with that one, I guess. Star shards gave you gold bar luck in the mines. It was in the frozen floors. Good to know. It gave us gold bar luck too today. Although luck, I mean, for lack of a better term, I guess. Don't get me wrong, Gold Bar, I'm happy to see you. I just wish you were a little more, you know, irony, I guess. Oh, the irony. But halfway through fall, how, what, what time are we looking at? We're a little over an hour right now. We should be able to get through fall in this, uh, in this stream for sure. Probably carry a little bit into winter. I, I do have to remember that um, uh, Spirit's Eve is going to throw a wrench into things because we're going to have to wait the whole day out for that one in order to check the garbage cans. But we'll also get the golden pumpkin out of that, which is pretty nice. Nice little paycheck that we can, we can cash in real quick. It'll get us a good start on our, uh, our money grind once winter rolls around. Is a joke somewhere and tastes kind of irony. I mean, I imagine that's what you'd say after you eat like a blood pudding or something. Has anyone tried blood pudding before? Is it like good? Like I know what blood tastes like. I mean, I've I've bit my lip before. But to to have it in like a congealed pudding format. I'm not sure where the rationale for that one came from, but I mean, it must, like, be okay, right? Because it wouldn't have stuck around as a culinary dish. Well, I guess not every culinary dish is, you know, a 10 out of 10, but... <laughs> I feel like, you know, when you look at some of the... When you look at some of the dishes that certain cultures, you know, are famous for... Well, not famous for necessarily, but that exist within certain cultures, you gotta start to wonder, like... Are they just doing this to, like... To shock people? <laughs> or is this like an actual thing that people enjoy? You smell the gold bar when you drink water, does it taste rich? I would have to imagine the answer is yes. Does gold smell like anything? I feel like I've not been in the proximity of gold enough to discern smell. Like Balut? Yes, but we don't need to talk about Balut. <laughs> like black pudding? He'd definitely drink blood if given the chance. All right, Karita, I think you just got put on a watch list somewhere for that comment, so uh, <laughs> be careful. I think that the the vampire society is now you know don't don't be surprised if you get Dracula knocking on your door sometime later tonight. Gold is odorless. That checks out, I think, based on what I know about chemistry or what I remember about chemistry. Twenty-six jades. We're halfway to the goal of uh, of fifty jades, where I would feel semi-confident in getting something out of our uh, out of treasure rooms. See how it goes. Also, don't forget, I walked up to the TV and still didn't get the queen of sauce. There we go, blackberry cobbler. I've cobbled together lots of blackberries already, so I don't know if that one's gonna help me too much.
Can you become a cobbler in 2023? Is that like a thing you can go to school for? Can you get like your, like a degree in, well, I guess it wouldn't be like a degree. It would be like an apprenticeship in cobbling. Or are, are cobblers, is that like a, like an old timey thing that like, do they, do they call them something else? Do they call them like, like shoe artists now? I, I really don't know what a cobbler do, does, to be honest with you. There are still cobblers. They still exist. Like, what is it? Do the cobbler... Do they just make the shoes? Do they, like... You have a dig, degree in clobbering? <laughs> is that a threat? Shoemaker? Like the comet? You enjoy your time uh, drawing, Spooky. Drawing toads, like like the Mario toads, or like the little ribbit ribbit toads. Or I guess they don't go ribbit. That's frogs. Toads kind of go like probably fix shoes. Fair resole. Uh, fair enough. You know what? I guess I've never been in a situation where I've had to go looking for my shoes to be repaired. Or resized or, or anything like that, but uh, good to know that the option is out there. Can't just type toad sound in chat. <laughs> That's cheating. I can't just say toads make a toad sound. Giraffes make a giraffe sound. What sound does a giraffe make, do you think? I've never been in the presence of a giraffe, except, like, at the zoo, zoo when I was, like, seven years old. I feel like a giraffe, just looking at them, I feel like they would make a sound like those, like... Maybe, like, lower pitch. Yeah, iron bars for the blacksmith bundle. That is correct. Giraffes are bigger than I think than you think they are. That's bad news because I think giraffes are pretty big. <laughs> I uh, that's probably true though. Like trying to picture scale scale is one of those things in your mind that it's like the hardest to get a grasp on for like anything. There'd be like animals or like the size of like the earth or re really anything. I find scale at least for me it's one of the harder things to to wrap my head around. Baked fish. That's that's not a luck boost, I'm pretty sure. I'm a fool. I do have the stuff for the crab pot bundle right in there. Okay, I can just sell this cockle then. We're good. I thought I had kept them around, and for some reason it didn't think I I didn't think to look for fish in the fish tank. Alright. A great message. I'm going to McDaniel. I want her Borgard. <laughs> you, you go. I, I get exactly what you mean, Snooey. You, you go get your McDonald's. You go get your McDonald. I love that. <laughs> I can I can just see the the headspace you're writing that from. Sometimes you know a good McDaniel burger is exactly what hits the spot. Do you think blue whales are big? They're bigger than that. I had a, a nightmare one time as a kid that I was like swimming in the ocean and I swam, I was like just in like a nice colorful coral reef. It was a great time. Then I swam through like a little hole in the coral reef and it was, it opened up into this vast abyss of blue emptiness. And then a, uh, a blue whale swam by me. It didn't even like try to like, you know, eat me or anything. It would just like literally swam by and I was so petrified of the sheer scale of the blue whale. And that's like a fake blue whale in my brain. And I was like a small like kid. I don't know what prompted that that nightmare, but that one stuck with me for a long time. It's 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 interesting that you know nightmares that I had as a kid. Like I can name like a like a decent few nightmares that I had as a kid. Couldn't tell you a single like good dream that I had as a kid. Weird how like the a strong word for it, but like the trauma of a nightmare. 
and like stick with you so much longer than like the the pleasantness of like a good memory from like an, from a nice dream. At least for me, that's how it works. I don't know. Thankfully, these days I don't have much of much of nightmares uh, at all because I don't have dreams. You can't have a nightmare if you never dream. Name that quote. Hey there, Tyler. Welcome on in. Blue whales are just incomprehensibly large. I, I fully believe it. I do not dispute that. Like, I could, I can, you know, take the statistic that, like, a blue whale is, like, as long as, like, 50 school buses or whatever. And I can say that, and I can be like, I can picture 50 school buses end to end, but it's like, that, that just can't be right, can it? Hip Dam 4 again, by the way. An ancient vessel made for ceramic material, made of a ceramic material, used to transport both dry and wet goods. Why did they make it with a hole in the side if it's going to be used to transport wet goods? What were they thinking? Water's going to spill right out of that. Any good liquid is just going to spill right out. Even any, even a lot of solids. You like fill that thing with Smarties? It's, it's not lasting very long, I'll tell you that. Flawed design. Hey Tyler, thank you for being a member for five months at the Positron level. I greatly appreciate the generosity. Thank you so much for the support. How long did Amphora take in the Price of Perfection? I don't remember Amphora being a tough one in the Price of Perfection. To be honest, most of what I remember about Price of Perfection is like the uh, like the cactus fruit. And the egg. Like a lot of, like all the stuff from like the finale mainly. Actually, like completing the museum, I don't remember having too much of an issue with. There probably was like one stream where I was like struggling to get the last artifact that I might have needed, which may have been chipped and four, I don't fully remember. But it's uh Yeah, no, it's just it's a blip on the radar compared to those other grinds. I'm not Starlight Glimmer. Who are you, Sunset Shimmer? You can't tell me what to be. I would ask, like, who your guys' favorite, uh... Favorite, like, fake version of Twilight Sparkle was, but I think I'm talking to the wrong audience for that one. <laughs> Right, the seaweed I should be able to take here, right? Because it's fishing collection. I always forget for some reason. Yeah. Sorry, right, just trying to get caught up on chat, just making sure I'm not missing anything. You guys are talking about, like, Burger King and stuff and, like, uh, fast food. I haven't been to Burger King in... I want to say last time I was at Burger King, probably, like, 2016. It's been, it's been a while. And to be honest, even for my last experience at Burger King, I don't intend to go back anytime soon. I, not like I had, like, a terrible experience, but, like, when I compare it to, like, the other fast foods... That I that I know and enjoy, like the Wendy's and the McDonald's and all that stuff. It's not, it's not. It doesn't do it for me. Maybe I've just had because I've been to Burger King like a number of times, and every time I've been like I've I've left like feeling like you know I kind of just wish I'd gone to like Wendy's or something instead. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just the Burger King that uh, is near me, but never been uh been my favorite. That's for sure. Sure, we work in a pinch, but. The only thing I like Burger King for is something that they're like they're not even responsible for. It's this it's like that song that's like, I walk to Burger King and then I walk back home from Burger King. That parody song, that one's so good. <laughs> it's in my head rent free.
I've been asked before, like, what my favorite genre of music is, and I, I don't know if it counts as a genre, but, I mean, those, like, comedy parody sort of deals, it's gotta be up there, man. It's gotta be, like, it's, those are the sort of songs that I listen to most frequently, other than, like, video game music. Like, the Weird Al parodies, the, like, MTG Remy parodies, that Burger King parody. And it's not a parody, but the Zendaya is Michi song? Or is that a parody? I don't even know. I just, I only recently became aware of that song. Zendaya is Michi. And LeBron James is Gwangi. <laughs> Please don't ever sing that again. I'm not, I'm not that bad of a singer, am I? Or is it just the song? <laughs> Weird Al, you mean cheese sandwich? That's a that's a deep cut right there, but yes. I'm in my rewatching era right now, and I kinda I should I should rewatch some of the the MLP stuff. It's been a long time since I've watched like most of it. I think it could be a nice trip down memory lane for me. Right now I'm in the middle of rewatching Breaking Bad. I just I just started season three. It's one of those ones that's like I mean, normally with like a rewatch or something, I like to put it on in the background and like work on other stuff while I while I listen to it. But Breaking Bad is one of those shows that it's kind of hard to do that with, at least for me, because it's such it's so like involved and like the story is so good and the characters and all that stuff and there's so much like subtlety going on that like kind of got to pay attention. Be good for debris today. Wanna, you know, you know the tree. The trees are still looking good, and that's the main thing I'm keeping ahead of with every day here. At the end of the season, maybe we'll do a little tree check in see if any trees have grown since our, uh, I guess, like since the very beginning. I feel like we're doing pretty well to stay on top of that. Yo, welcome on it. Welcome on in, Bean. You didn't miss much in the first hour, to be honest. It's been uh, much of the same as this. Have a good one there, Safira. Thanks for hanging out. Take care. Why do I have these? <laughs> Where did these come from? I guess I just like got them during winter and just have been holding on to them because I wasn't planning on selling them. But hey, you know what? That's a good start to our to our winter foraging in the future here. You watch Breaking Bad after you finally finish Better Call Saul. Yeah, I finished Better Call Saul, and then I like been like six months since I finished watching Better Call Saul, or whenever like the the finale first aired or whatever. Um, now I'm rewatching Breaking Bad, and I'm probably hopping to Better Call Saul again after that, just to get like the whole story now that it's all laid out on the table. Very nice. You worry more about the rocks on the on your farm? Don't worry about the rocks on my farm. Let me worry about the rocks on my farm. And you might be like, it doesn't seem like you're wor that worried about the rocks on your farm, though. And you'd be correct. Maybe I'm foolish. Maybe it's Maybelline. But I'm I'm not that worried about the rocks on my farm. Pieces will fall where they may. Will the rocks vanish in the winter? They don't. They don't know. <laughs> We're, we're stuck with them until we can get rid of them ourselves, basically. All right, today's the Stardew Valley Fair. Um, I need to wait for that to be over before I can do my, my garbage run, obviously. I'm not that invested in doing a Great Grange display. It's my favorite non-Stardew game. You assuming my favorite game is Stardew? I mean, Stardew's definitely up there, but... It's hard to say. I mean, there's... It, it really depends on when you ask me. Like, like I could make a case for, like, all the Dark Souls games, or, like, Elden Ring, Bloodborne, that sort of, those sort of games. I, I've, you know, I'm a big fan of, uh, like, Earthbound and Mother 3. I'm a big fan of Super Mario Galaxy 2. I know that's kind of a weird one to throw out there, but it's, uh... That one has a special place in my heart. 
Uh, we, I guess we can bring some stuff for the Grange display. I'm going to bring one Cactus Fruit for the Grange display. Scratch that. I'm going to bring all my Cactus Fruit for the Grange display. And if Mayor Lewis doesn't like it, he can, he can go get his own Lucky Purple Shorts as, as, as far as I'm concerned. Is there anything I should be doing while I wait for the bear to open? I, Of course, I should be petting pie. Obviously. Yeah, but to be honest, I haven't played a lot of, like, non-Stardew games in, in recent times. I've been busy with, like, other stuff, and so, like, between, like, uh, like streaming Stardew and, like, doing stuff off-camera and, like, all that stuff, it's it's mainly been Stardew that I've been playing, So I kind of forget what it's like to play other games. <laughs> as silly as that might sound. That said, I am very much looking forward to Tears of the Kingdom. Don't know if I'll play any of it like tomorrow, but I do want to. I do want to pick it up and maybe play some over the weekend. Just you know, give myself a little bit of a, a little bit of a reprieve. And I never actually beat Breath of the Wild, so I should go back and do that at some point. But I'm one of those people that has to like 100% it if I'm going to beat it, and 100% Breath of the Wild. I'd look. I know Small Ant did it in less than like 24 hours recently, but. He's, he's made of different stuff. All I can say. It's beautiful. Chat, will you rate my, uh, my Grange display? On a scale of 0 to 100? Not factoring in, like, what it's actually going to score with Mayor Lewis. What do you personally think of it? Do you like it? I worked pretty hard on it. I put a lot of thought into this one. Thousand one twenty seven, a hundred, a hundred. <laughs> Cactus fruit out of a hundred. I'll take it. You know what? I, I will absolutely take that. Hey, Maya Lewis. Ready for your? Uh, ready for you to judge me? I'm gonna like go over here. Can I get my fortune red while Mayor Lewis is is doing that? We haven't got our. We we did get our fortune red last time. Still not an iron bar. Clint still not, has not learned how to make an iron bar himself. He's just making out here making like silver bars. You actually love cactus fruit. I want to try one in real life sometime. I feel like it'd be good. Hundred out of a hundred. Lewis' score will be forty-three. Is that some quick back of the napkin math there, Morgan? Or are you just hazarding a guess? What's he got for me? I got 46! I got 4th place! <laughs> These Philistines, they don't understand true magnificence when they see it. Granted, Beatrix doesn't have that much of a, you know, history with cactus fruits either, so she's probably just as confused as everybody else, but... We all know, they're just... Ingrates, the lot of them. They don't understand. But they will. Oh, they will. We got 50 star tokens. Um, what's the what's the prizes today? 100 hay? Rip. We get a scare, a rare crow? I think, did, did we, we got the fedora last time, right? We'll do a little gambling. Just see how it goes. Yeah, we bought the cactus fruit from Sandy. Before we do our gambling, though, we got to check him with the, with the fortune teller once more. I doubt much has changed since literally our only friend still is the dwarf. Homie, but let's see. Ah yes, it's dwarf's birthday. You thought everyone forgot, but then you showed up with a nice gift. What a good friend. You're not telling the future. That was in the past. That was last month. I gave her I gave her the lemon stone. Now I see you, middle-aged, walking through town at dusk. You pause at a window to see a family having dinner. You hang your head and hurry off into the darkness. No matter how many times you tell me this, this is not going to come to pass. I'm not going to hang my head and like look in their window and like be all creepy and stuff. I'm just going to walk by, steal whatever they have in their garbage can, and move on. There it goes. Here's the ball's moved on. Ah! You're in combat. There's something dreadful bearing down on you from the dark, but you seem more than ready to face it. Still don't really know what this means, even though I'm sure it's been explained to me in the past. Wonderful. Thank you, Wellwick. Love your show. Big fan. 
every star drop is an individual goal. So, no star drops for me until until I roll a, a lucky goal. Speaking of lucky, I'm feeling a little green today. Let's go, like, 50 on green. At the house on green. I mean, it's our first spin. It's pretty likely that it's going to be green, right? Why not just, like, bet the whole... Bet the farm on it? There we go. Just doubled our earnings. You guys want to quadruple our total by going up... To, just Just go all in here? Quadruple from the 50? Because combat is the only skill I have points in. I now have points in fishing as well, so... I actually have more points in fishing than I do in, in combat. Um... Go green. Naturally. We'll go with... I'm, you know, we don't want to go all in this time. We'll go 198. Just, you know, just in case. Ooh, okay, I, th I didn't know who was going to go the full distance there. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, we're at 398. I'm going to go ahead and bet. Do it on green again. I mean, green... It's been green three times in a row, so, you know, my, my brain is telling me it's going to be orange this time. It's going to be orange. It's a one in four chance for it to be orange, but that's not how probability works. So so they tell me. They, they know something that I don't. Um, 300. 300 on green. Doesn't the fortune teller always say the combat thing? I think so, yeah. But I still wish I knew what it was really in reference to. Alright, chat, hear me out. Like, it hasn't been, it's been green four times in a row. Like, it's, we're, we're due for an orange right now. Like, if you bet every single time on green, you're guaranteed to lose eventually, right? Because it's, it's gonna hit orange eventually. So, like, you gotta hedge your bets sometimes and put it on orange if you want to keep that win streak going. If, if you want to be, like, if you want to be self-defeatist, right, you should you should always bet on green and just be, like, happy with, you know, winning most of the time. But, like, if you want to win all of the time, you gotta go orange, at least, like, every now and again. I'll go green this time because I feel like we're still... I feel like it's still okay, but orange is starting to call my name. We can literally keep going on green forever. Who said it? Karita? <laughs> My win streak! It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Well, now now I'm definitely betting on green because obviously we just got orange, so we're not going to get it a second time in a row. That would be silly. It's like a one in eight chance to get two in a row. There's no way. Yo, but take the wheel. Pretty sure with gambling, you're guaranteed to lose. Not at the casino in Stardew Valley. If you just bet on the slots every time, you, I think the, I think it's in your favor, not the host's favor, right? It's possible to win on orange forever too, just a lot less likely. Mm, debate, debatable. We're gonna go. I mean, go we'll green. We'll go green. One thousand on green. If you can go infinite in debt, you can guarantee victory while gambling. Ooh, I, f I should have gone with my gut on that one. That was that felt so orange. That felt so orange. All right, 192 on green. It was just orange, so it's not going to be orange again. That's just science. Actually, a 1 in 16 chance, but close enough. All right, then. Well, 1 in 16 it is. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I, I wasn't that attached to getting a rare crow anyway. I think we already got the rare crow last year, didn't we? And if not, I mean, there will always be next year. See you, suckers. Let's go get our, um, our garbage cans. That's the real prize here. There is a uh, there's a ruby waiting for me in one of these garbage cans, so I I gotta go pick that up real quick. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> next year, next year. 98% of gamblers quit right before their big win. So true. Don't be like that guy in the in the meme image where he's like mining for diamonds and he stops like one pickaxe swing away from the diamonds and he's like, I give up. Don't be that guy. Don't be quitter Quimby.
Except maybe when it comes to gambling, you, like, should quit. But you didn't hear that from me. A little fried egg. Sunny side up. Have you ever eaten an egg sunny side down? Do they, do they serve eggs sunny side down? Or is that just, like... You just call that, like, a mistake instead. <laughs> hey there, Casey. Over medium? Is that what it's called when you just serve... Because I'm just talking about serving, like, a sunny side up egg, but, like, upside down. Is it just over easy or over medium or whatever? That's... How is that even a thing? I was trying to make a joke, but is, is it a real thing? You can just, like, flip a sunny side egg upside down and it's called something new? Oh, no, it's not that? Okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe I'm confused. Doesn't make sense to me, but. Uh, sell the fried egg. Don't sell the cactus fruits, obviously. You flip the eggs in the pan to cook the top part. Okay. See, I'm just talking about like you cook it like a sunny side up egg, but then you put it on the plate upside down. That's that's sunny side down. It has to be. That's the only thing that makes sense. And I feel like it would taste different. I feel like it would actually taste different from a sunny side up egg. Does that make sense? It depends on your perspective on it. All right, Gus. Show me the lucky lunch. Fish taco. You piece. That'd actually be useful, depending on, like... I, I mean, I have the seafoam pudding, so I'm not that worried about getting another fishing buff, but fish taco is an easier one to come by, usually, so... When you crack the egg straight into your mouth, that's just called, like, a punishment. Having Eggs Benedict for Mother's Day brunch on Sunday. Aw, oh, Eggs Benedict is probably my favorite form of egg. I really like Eggs Benedict and I like deviled eggs. Those are probably like my top two, like an egg tier list. And most other forms of eggs fall somewhere in like the higher tiers. I can't think of any t types of eggs that I've eaten that are like not good. It is always amazing just how many different things you can make with eggs though. Now, I'm not even that's not even going into like recipes that require eggs that's just like the eggs themselves or like where the eggs are like the main part of the dish completed five goals in one day Mary you're on a roll randomizer was kind to you either that or you're just like incredible probably both someday you should come for brunch I don't know how far apart we are Lisa but you know I'd be down if I'm ever in the neighborhood. You hate sunny side up? The texture is, is, is bad? Maybe you've just never had a good sunny side up egg. Have you ever considered that? Because I've had some bad sunny side up eggs that have like a weird like gooey texture. They're like undercooked. That would def I could definitely see how that would put you off. But a good sunny side up egg, I feel like, you know, the texture is just like fine. But maybe maybe that's just me. Hundred and one ways to cook eggs. There's probably more than hundred and one ways to cook eggs if you if you get creative. Best egg is the one in ramen noodles. I don't think I've ever had, like, ramen with egg in it. Which is surprising to me. Maybe I've just never had the opportunity, but, like... Yeah, I don't think I ever have. I've had ramen and I've had eggs, but I've never had ramen with eggs. That said, I've never actually had ramen from, like, a proper restaurant. It's always... I've always just had, like, the instant ramen, which I obviously know is, like, night and day comparison... When people hear that, they're going to be like, Argon, you need to try real ramen right now. And I'll be like, okay, I'll be right back. Hold, please. I'll go get some ramen. But what if I did? 
Would you respect me, or would you be mad if I went and just got ramen? Just took like an impromptu 15 minute break to go find some ramen. <laughs> Bean hot pot. Ooh, that magnetism buff is tempting. I'll pass, though. A little wheat flour, wheat a mix. It'd be so funny. I think it'd be funny for like the first like 30 seconds when I do it, but then you gotta remember, then there's just like dead air on the stream for like 15 minutes. <laughs> so I don't know how funny you would, I don't know if the joke would persist that long. It would be a great moment for like a, a solitary clip though. Um, toss the wood. Toss the wood, take the cockle. Bring us to get ramen. <laughs> Just suddenly switch to like a, a live feed. Completely drop Stardew altogether and become a food reviewing channel. A, a ramen reviewing channel, no less. Get it. I don't know where my brain was at. I saw this over here, the charcoal kiln. And I think it's like, it reminded me for some reason out of my peripheral vision of Marnie's hair. Like the back of, like if you're looking at the back of Marnie's sprite and like that's like her hair due from the back. I was like, why is Marnie in my house? I th I, that thought crossed my, crossed my mind for like a split second. Then I was like, brain, are you okay? It's been a long day, I guess. I don't know. We could always play D and D if we wanted to. I suppose that's always an option, yeah. I want that reminds me. I want to look into like the the bingo card. I think someone posted a in the Discord something about like setting up a bingo card for the stream. That could be fun. I'll have to look into what they posted and ask them about it. You're gonna go out to eat. You'd rather have Chinese dim sum than go to Jap Japanese for ramen. I don't have a preference because I've never been out to. I don't think I've ever eaten out at like a Chinese restaurant or a Japanese restaurant. I've gotten like like Chinese food as like takeout before, but I've never actually like. Actually, no, I probably have. Just when I was like really young, I remember there was like a Chinese restaurant, like a Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet near where we lived when I was like a, a little kid. That's that's my only recollection of it though. Never had dim sum at all, so I need to expand my culinary palate. That's for sure. Just rarely in a situation where I where I am able to expand my culinary palate or am willing to go out of my way to do so, but. I should put myself in more of those situations. There's, I mean, if I if I look, I'm sure there's plenty of restaurants around here that would be, that I could get things that I've never tried before. Chinese buffet has been your favorite type of restaurant literally your whole life. Chinese food is like really good. Like honestly, even the takeout and like the, like the stuff you can even get from like a grocery store is okay. And the fact that that's, like, okay or even good sometimes tells me that, you know, an actual, like, Chinese buffet like that or, like, hot and ready at a restaurant probably be, uh, I'd, I would probably be heaven from that one. Do not doubt it. Not at all. Thank you, Nightbot. I will hydrate. Dummy. All right, Gus. He's not gonna be expecting it this time. Hey, Gus. Hey, Gus. Is your refrigerator running? Is he better? Go catch it. Pepper poppers, though. Ooh, that's nice. that's a nice speed buff. Hearing all these Mother Three songs on my stream playlist makes me want to go play Mother Three again. 
I just wish there was like an easier way to to play it in English. It's just, it's just never been released, and it's, you just got to go with like the fan translation version, and it's it's great for what it is. But it's I mean I wish it was just more accessible. Definitely do got to play that again at some point though. Does anybody have one of them battery packs? My TV remote died, and it's a real ha Can't Pam send you battery packs in the mail? <laughs> what the heck? Pam needs juice. All right. Wait, who's Pam again? I love in the world of Stardew. Spicy equals fast. I mean, it's just like in real life. When you eat something, like, extremely spicy, you run really fast to the bathroom in like an hour or two. It's just the way it works. Just to, you know, interpret it a bit differently in Stardew, I would say. Nintendo hates Mother 3. There's There's got to be some... They've never given, given like an exact reason why Mother 3 never got translated or, or whatever. I mean, I know there's like probably good speculation and all that stuff, but I don't... Has Nintendo ever said like why like Mother 3 never got re released outside of Japan. I think it's to do with, like, some, like, ratings or, like, some of the content in the game. I don't know. I'd have to... I'd have to... It's been a while since I've perused the Mother 3 slash Earthbound spheres of the internet. I almost picked up that Blackberry. That would have been foolish foolish. Delayed speed effect. Mother 3 sold not that good. It sold like 300,000 copies. I mean... Fair, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I just want them to release it, man. I just want to play Mother 3 on my Switch. Is that too much to ask? Such a good game. Need it in my life again. Had Pam send you a battery pack in the mail the day before you got that quest? I thought she could do that. Pam. Alright. Oh, hi. Sorry. Didn't mean to, you know, cut you off there. How are we doing as far as jades go here? 32 jades? We're getting up there. Part of me just wants to, like, I'm itching. I'm itching to go back out to Skull Cavern. Gus is kind of loving the fried eel lately, huh? I'm itching to go out to Skull Cavern and just, like, try and, like, get something. It's like, I mean, 32, like, 30 plus staircases. We might not get, like, a, we might not be, like, guaranteed necessarily to get a, a treasure room in that amount of staircases. But... If we reset the day enough times, we should get one, like, relatively quickly, and then it's just a matter of, you know, do we get our good enough luck to get something that we actually need out of that. Part of, part of me wants to go try it. Really, really does, but... I feel like I should hold off and just have better luck when I when I have the 50 jades that I need. I, I set myself a goal, try and stick to it. I do have a Desert Warp Totem to go with my staircases. Yeah, we actually, we picked, actually, did I? I don't remember now. Yeah, I do, I do still have it. I was going to say, I, I know I used it at one point in the past to, like, do some shenanigans in Skull Cavern just to, like, show some stuff off, but I'm pretty sure I reset that day. I did, so. No treasure rooms before 10, so it's really only 20. That's assuming we don't get any, like, freebies, though, as well, because freebies could definitely help bolster our odds a little bit. There's always the chance that you get, like, a free shaft or a few free staircases here and there to base, based on our daily luck. That would certainly, I mean, the more staircases we have at, at that point in theory, the more freebies we're likely to encounter, too, because the deeper we can just go without freebies, if that makes sense. that'll definitely help. 
tomorrow would be perfect. I mean, we got we can trade we can trade some jade for staircases. That is true. Maybe we'll see how things are at the end of fall here. Once we get to the end of the fall in the next week here, and go from there, because we we do we also want to wait for a uh, a star drop luck day. I know. I mean, I've settled for golden pyramid days in the past when it came to like progressing through the mines. For something like this, I think star drop luck is kind of a must. Because jades are so so slow to come to, to trickle in. I feel like we gotta do it. Other three never got localized because the DS was already out by the time it would have gotten localized. Any future attempts to localize it would require growing through Itoi. Itoi had no interest in localizing one of the three. Because he's busy and has an officially endorsed fan has officially endorsed the fan translation for anyone who wants to play it in English. You know what? Thank you for the thorough breakdown, Stage Light. That's totally fair. If that's if that is Etoy's wishes, then in Etoy he's the one he's the he's the mastermind behind it, really, so. Fair play. Pokemon and Claire, we are currently speedrunning fall, basically. As best I can. Trying to amass great quantities of jades. And eventually, once winter comes around, we can start getting some money. Start getting some good some good moolah rolling in. Meanwhile, in the meantime. Hey Gus, you got any lucky lunches? Please? I know it's only it's it's 6 a.m. Trying to serve me trout soup at 6 a.m. Oh, he's, he's just telling me that it's gonna be served later. I know, I know. What's the best thing we could possibly get in treasure floors? Uh, iridium bars right now because we need twenty of them for the for the obelisk. Otherwise, I mean, I would settle for like an auto grabber or an auto petter. But really, I mean, I'd, I'd like to get multiples of them if I could. I could I could do with just one for the time being if I needed to, because that's the that's the best way to. It allows you to avoid farming experience and still get like eggs and milk and stuff. Which is a pretty big win in my book. Icky little seaweed hanging out down here. I thought that was a supply crate for a second. I was like, how they get so far inland? You thought it was a supply crate, but it was just me. Wood. It's just me, Chuck Testa. Yup. Anyone here remember Chuck Testa? Or is that, like, too old of an internet meme at this point? It's a vintage meme, for sure. You do not get experience if the autograbber picks things up. That is that is exactly the plan. The auto petter keeps your animals happy, as well as, like, making sure... I think to, to like, make sure your animals gain friendship, you have to have the auto petter... And you have to have, um, and you have to have them, like, eat food outside, like, eat the grass outside. Hey, trout soup. <laughs> and then that will, um, that's, like, enough for them to start gaining, like, a little bit of friendship at a time. I'd have to look into it again to know exactly the mechanics behind it, but the auto-grabber is, is more the important thing. Bro, you're doing Chuck Testa on Chuck Testa. So true. Sorry for the long comment. What you what you got here? In a version, if you staircased, if you staircased in floor 120, the regular mines. Oh, you're talking about like a previous version of Stardew Valley where you could like get to Skull Caverns by using a staircase on floor 120. I do remember that, and I think that's like a cool little, cool little glitch. But I'm glad it was patched. It would make things. I mean, for challenge runs, it could make for some interesting. Plays for sure to get you to the desert. I guess that would have saved me a lot of time in uh, in the price of perfection. Now that I think about it, if you could just like warp to the desert with a staircase from the bottom of the mines, wouldn't have needed the cactus fruit at all. Just 
just an auto petter guarantees eventually full friendship if fed. I thought they had to be outside. I guess maybe if they're fed outside, then it goes faster, but good to know that it can just be from the silo as well. Just from they being fed inside, not even necessarily a silo. Yeah, I don't know what version of Sardi that was in, but I do I do remember hearing whispers of it for sure. Auto grabbers are sold at Marnie's at level 10 farming, which is not an option for us, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to try and get one from Skull Cavern in order to get any of that stuff for now. But it's not like insanely rare from Skull Cavern, right? Red plate. Yummy, yummy. Goes on a red plate, beets, and red cabbage, and... And blood, probably. Blood, sweat, and tears. Oh, it's debris day. I gotta make sure I, I take care of that. Got a decent supply of mushrooms here as well. Part of me wants to sell these common mushrooms, because that would be a good chunk of change. But it's also good food for when our blackberries eventually run out. Even I mean, it's even better food than blackberries, like, on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't know. I'll leave it for now. I can always just take it to Pierre if I decide I want to sell it in the future, but... How much how much money is that? Anyone anyone want to do a little little quick math on that one? How much how many common mushrooms do I have right now? I don't know how much they sell for a piece. We got 350 right now. They probably don't sell for like all that much, but they probably sell for enough to make it make it an eyebrow raising adventure, right? Got a haul from Skull Cavern earlier today of two auto petters, three auto grabbers, two crystallariums, 12 iridium bars, four slime egg. What the heck? Mary, oh my gosh. That was 697 floors with magic rock candy. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> That's a, that sounds like the kind of. That sounds like my dream wish list, though. Auto petters, auto grabbers, crystallariums, iridium bars, and slime eggs. That's like everything I want out of, the, out of Skull Caverns. We're not like some weirdo that has to go there to get like garlic seeds or something. <laughs> Who even does that? We'll get 40 gold? 40 gold for selling 350 common mushrooms? 40 gold per mushroom. 14,000 gold total. Okay. I mean, that would push us up to 100,000. Which would be one-fifth of what I want by the end of the year. Be a good start. Maybe we'll see how the winter forge goes, and if push comes to shove, if I need to use that trick, that little ace up my sleeve of selling all my common mushrooms off, then I'll be uh, I'll be glad to do so. Yeah, three hundred fifty mushrooms. I'm gonna get so many seeds this time. I got a lot of seeds last time, too. I just didn't always get the right seeds. Although I did get them a lot faster than I think anyone expected. Alright, field snack, bread. And let's do the debris clearing. I've been working on the farmstead all the live long day. I've been working on the farmstead chopping these logs away. Can you hear the window whistling through the autumn? I've been working on the farmstead. Wish I could see through. You know, for as far as impromptu songs go, that one that one came together decently okay in the end. <laughs> Have a good one there, Bean. 
Thank you for hanging out. Rest well. Oh my gosh, look at all these trees. The trees. There's so many saplings trying to sprout in this little area. Uh-oh. Don't chop that tree. <laughs> Was that the time I set up a whole counter for the treasure rooms and then instantly got the last seeds? I felt so bad about that because that was Chaoji, resident like modder and uh, encoder extraordinaire for for the stream for like a lot of stuff with these challenges. He had gone to all the trouble of like setting up this nice little script to track the treasure rooms. Literally the first time I try to show it off, we get the last thing we need and we no longer need to use it. <laughs> I still have that that code if I need to use it again in the future, but I guess now would be a good time to bring it back up, but I need to I need to look into it. The wiki command is a little finicky. You have it's 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 case sensitive for some things. You might have to if you're looking for fall seeds, you might have to like capitalize F and S. I wish it weren't so, but that's just it's an actual glitch in like the search function of the wiki itself. So it's uh it's not something I can fix on my end. So I've been told anyway. little tree. Hmm. Huh. Esky bee. Ooh, since, I'm, since I'm doing my in my rewatch era right now, I gotta rewatch Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared as well. That's a, that's a quick and easy rewatch, too. The original six six episode little mini-series. Oh, classic. Classic YouTube, YouTube banger right there. Can I get those seeds at all? I don't think I can. Well, I can. I guess I can do one of those. No. Uh, <laughs> rocks are getting a little. All right, we're just we're gonna have to go the long way around for that one. I think we'll just just take the scenic route here. It's fine. Fine. All right. There's a rock there too. Don't worry about that. Okay. Oh, and there's a rock there. Rock, rock there too. Okay, it's fine. That's that's all good. There's rock. There we wait. A tree there. At least I can deal with that one. Holy, <laughs> there's a bit of a circuitous path we got there in the end, at least. Digital style. <laughs> the internet. There's over three things to do. Wow, look a pie chart. Digital style. Digital style. Might be my favorite uh, episode of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, is the, the one with the computer. I'm a computer. I'm a computer -y guy. Everything made out of buttons and wires. I'd like to show you my digital life. Inside my mind, there is a digital mind. The new Don't, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared show is so good. I watched it as well, yeah. It's, it's a different vibe to the original, for sure, but it's it's still very good, yeah. Very much enjoyed it. I feel like this tree here might be new. I don't remember two trees being, like, that close together before. Maybe I'm just not remembering correctly, but... Our debris situation is looking pretty nice, though. than that one, obviously. Take what I can get. I'll go to the Cinder Sap Forest, make sure that ha Hat Mouse's home is, you know, doing okay here. Probably be good. I guess I also forgot to check down down here. Mostly because I didn't want to see all this forage. Look at, look at all this forage just taunting me. The hazelnuts and the common mushroom, the wild plums, oh my. grass is definitely helping. Oh, 100%. Yeah, the grass is making a, a big difference as far as, like, the stones being being unable to spread past them. Nice little wall. Nice little organic wall. It means I unfortunately think that some of our, uh, some of our funds that we earn through, like, 
through winter, we're going to have to go towards buying some grass starters. Just, in, just to make our farm navigable for as long as possible. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Gave you an unnerving sense of body horror. There are some moments like that for sure. Like if you're not, uh, if if you're not okay with like body horror and like sort of imagery thereof, not definitely not the sort of show for you. But if you're okay with that stuff, it's I think it's I think it's a good watch. You need to be in a certain cert the right kind of headspace, and you need to be a certain kind of uh, person. In order to enjoy Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, but if you are that kind of person, it, it hits a spot. No other show can. Very few other shows, I suppose. It'd be rough when we have to get to the secret woods at some point here. <laughs> we'll figure we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We'll cross that quarry when we come to it. How are we going to earn funds in winter? Now that I have opened the door to being able to sell stuff directly to shops instead of just geode farming. Um, I can use a clay farming pattern. We'll go over once winter comes around, but I can use a clay farming pattern to farm for winter forage instead. And winter forage sells for a decent chunk of change, so it'll be uh, it'll be quite a bit of money, quite a bit of money per day, if I can commit to it. Decent amount of bombs as well. Okay with that. Our trees doing up here. Uh, they're obviously the trees are not gonna spread. Yo, that would be so cool. If fruit tree saplings could or like if fruit trees could spread their saplings like normal trees. That would be a neat little addition addition. There's probably like a mod for that, honestly, or if there's not, there should be. Be just a nice little quality of life change. Get yourself some more fruit trees. Um, you don't put your bombs in the dresser. This much I know to be true. We just doubled our bomb count today. That's pretty wild. Eutimus. What if fruit trees were OP? Fruit trees are kind of OP. At least now, now that I'm allowed to sell stuff directly to shops, fruit trees are kind of are kind of a good money maker. At least, like as far as like passive income goes. Like, don't get me wrong, fruit trees on their own are never going to hold a candle to the likes of you know, clay farming, geode farming, winter forge farming. I feel like winter forge farming is such a mouthful. I got to figure out a better name for that. Just winter foraging, but like winter foraging, then then you're just thinking that I'm gathering. Wind. I guess I technically am, but what if instead of like clay farming and winter forage farming? Because most of the time you do it on the beach, right? So what if we just called it to you know you know ease the sensibilities a little bit? What if we just called it like beach combing? Just we're just combing the beach for. Tens of thousands of gold worth of forage. This is, it's not weird. It's not it's not like concerned they've never intended that to be the way it goes. It's just a little beach combing. Beach tilling, winter tilling. Yeah, winter tilling is probably a good word for it. But I mean beach combing. That's that's a real word. It has precedence in the real world. Anyone ever gone beach combing? So is, is beachcombing in real life, it's literally just like walking up and down the beach looking for like seashells or whatever, right? Ooh, a fried egg. There you go. Like beach tilling, winter tilling. Yeah, I mean, tilling fits. Tilling fits the bill pretty well. Did I check this? Why does the beach have clay anyway? It's just sand. I mean, if you dig deep enough under sand in real life, you'll find clay. Pretty sure. Been there, done that whenever you're near an ocean. 
One thing I've always wanted to do is, like, take a metal detector to the beach. I don't know if you'd actually, like, find anything of any remote value. Maybe just, like, some bottle caps here and there. Although in the modern day, I don't even know if bottle caps. But if bottle caps are all that uh, prevalent out on the beaches, but... It just seems like a fun little, like, hobby to get into. Or, like, geocaching. I know that's, like, a completely different thing, but geocaching? That's always intrigued me a little bit. Kind of wanted to look, in, look into that in the past. That th That's still something that people do, right? There's, I mean, it's, it seems like such a novel concept. It's probably, like, a niche sort of community, but... Um... from what I know about geocaching, it's like you literally just, like, people will go and, like, hide a little hash out in the wilderness, and you, like, are given coordinates to... I don't remember the exact, like, specifics of how it goes. You, like, go out and find it and add your own little thing to the geocache, so it's like a... It's like a little collective time capsule, almost. We got a thunderstorm. That's pretty nice, because we can get a battery pack out of this, then. accidentally found your a geocache in your hometown. I always wonder about that too, of like how how often geocaches are found by people who like aren't geocaching and they're just like, what the heck is this? Not all geocaches are little. Oh, I missed it. I missed it, but I see the, the lightning rod pulsating. Robbing with excitement. Yeah, geocaching seems like it would be a fun time for sure. It's like a group activity, but you don't have to deal with the rest of the group. <laughs> you can It's a group activity that you can do by yourself. Why did I say it like that? Why did I say what? I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. A little bread. A little soggy bread. Would anyone care to share us this soggy baguette from the from the trash? This lovely autumn day. Did I have to say throbbing? What's wrong with the word throbbing? With excitement? Yeah. I mean, I guess, like, a lightning rod can't really get excited, so it'd be, like, throbbing with, like, energy instead. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with the word throbbing. Robbing has a place in daily nomenclature. Pulsing. You read too many adult romances and you literally gagged. I mean, Nico, I hate to say it, but that's on you. It's just a word. You like thrumming with energy? Ooh, thrumming is a great word, actually. But it's not what the... Thr thrumming is different, though, because thrumming is like... It's thrumming, it's not throbbing. The lightning rods in Stardew, they throb, they don't thrum. Maybe they also thrum? Also, speaking of thrumming, let's thrum along with these bees, please. I'm a little bee. Gotta make I gotta figure out lyrics to the B song one day. Depending on how my, my settings for my uh my stream playlist right now are configured. Might be due for pickle jar rag here in a second too, after after the B song. That's how it happened earlier in the stream. <laughs> Throbbing by itself is fine, but when you add the word excitement, it changes things. Throbbing with excitement. I don't know why we have to go there. <laughs> Arsnip soup? Ugh. At least Pam will be happy, I guess. I can. I was going to go store the battery pack, but I'm going to be back in there anyway to store my mushrooms, so... There's Pickle Jar Rag, right on cue. I guess it is set up in a like a sequence right now. 
And PJR's in chat, please. PJR? The Anthem of a Generation? Tiny Kong is killing all the bees. That's the throwback. Am I just looking for lucky lunches or anything with a luck boost? I mean, anything with a luck boost is nice. We did already get the uh, three fried eels here, which all have plus one luck each. I don't know if there's anything with plus two luck, but I know that lucky lunches obviously have the plus three luck, so that would be the main thing I'd be looking for. Parsnips are good. I think I do like parsnips, actually. I don't know, just something about, like, parsnip soup, though, sounds like... I don't know. Pumpkin soup is plus two. I thought pumpkin soup might have been something. I couldn't remember if it was just, like, a, like a defense buff or not. But I knew it stuck in my brain for a reason, because I remember that one Salman's video where he hypes up pumpkin soup. It couldn't have just been for the defense buff, obviously. Am I crazy to think, by the way, that, like... I Like, I'm a fan of soup, by and large. I got nothing against soup. But I feel like if, like... Like, take, for instance, like, carrot soup, right? I'd rather just have the carrots. I feel like, in soup form, the carrots are lesser. And I feel like the same would be true for, like, parsnip soup. And I feel like most soups are kind of like that, where, like, they're still good, and depending on the different kinds of soup, like, you can create something that is greater than the sum of its parts. But if it's just, like, a like a one-tone soup, like a carrot soup, a tomato soup... I mean, tomato soup is different for me because I hate tomatoes, but I, I, could, I could eat, uh... No, no, sorry, Gus. But I could eat tomato soup just fine. What about French onion soup? I mean, I've never eaten a French onion. What's the difference between a French onion and a, and a regular onion? Does it wear a beret? Hey there, Colt. Uh, old fish. Good to see you. And Slinky. Thank you very much for being a member for three months at the Positron level. I greatly, greatly appreciate the generosity. Thank you so much. It means the world, thank you. The way it makes you cry. It's just regular onions, but a French soup. So this so the soup wears the beret, not the not the not the onions. Good. All right, Gus, please. Please give me the carp surprise of my dreams. This, this man is taunting me. I just want my lucky lunch. He can give you, he can sell lucky lunch, right? Like the dish of the day can be lucky lunch. I don't know. Do you think it's like, uh, like the dish of the day is, is random every single day or is it like weighted in a certain way? I mean, I know it's, like, based on, like, a, a whole number of factors, like, game seed and, like, your footsteps taken per day and all that weird stuff. Like, you can plan around it if you're Blade. But I wonder if, like, certain dishes are more likely than others. It can? Okay. Good at tuna. Thank you. Fries in French. Oh, oh, oh. That's, uh, that's laughing in French, actually. I recently, like, speaking of French, I recently started re-watching or, like, reliving some of the songs from, uh, from my favorite musical, Notre Dame de Paris. You, you all probably thought my favorite musical was Hamilton. And I mean, granted, it's up there, but Notre Dame de Paris, we watched that back in, uh, back in French class, I want to say in like grade 9 or 10, 
and it's stuck with me ever since. Even if you don't, like, understand French, you can find, like, the, like, subtitled versions of those songs on, on YouTube. It's so beautiful. It's such a great, great musical. I, I would highly recommend it. And I ain't talking about the Disney version. Croutons equals yuck. I've had... Croutons, weirdly, are one of those things. I feel like you can have really bad croutons, but you can have, like, really good croutons, too. Really good croutons, too, man. I don't know why I said it like that, but... Like, I've had croutons, like... Like, I've had, like, pretty rough croutons that are, like, stale and, like, feel like they're gonna, like, cut up your entire mouth when you bite into one. But I've also had croutons that are just the right amount of crunch, and they're nicely seasoned, and... If you, if, you, if you happen to, you know... They they do add a certain je ne sais quoi, like a Caesar salad or something like that. I feel like they are... Uh, they've earned their place. They've earned their place as a mainstay in that salad. Never liked them except with the Swiss cheese as a topping for onion soup. Very specific, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. That does sound delicious. Stay away from my salad. All right. More croutons for me. Croissant croutons are very good. I could see that. And I like croissants. I like croutons. That said, I also, you know, I like jelly beans and I like croutons, but I don't think I want stale jelly beans in my salad. Although, it wouldn't be the worst thing to look. You'd rather have an anchovy? I mean... That's because anchovies are, like, good, right? Anchovies are delicious. Anchovies, sardines, mmm, baby! I'll slurp them up. Slurp them up like big old spaghetti noodles. Briny, fishy spaghetti noodles. Give it to me. Guilty pleasure, indeed, but... <laughs> Did thine own self be true? $300! For what? Just throwing five bags of sugar? Man, Lewis, I don't know where he's selling that sugar at, but I gotta find, uh, I gotta find out. The whole empire in there waiting to be happening. We're not in the sugar business, we're in the empire business. Alright. It is the Spirits Eve Festival today, which means we have to wait until 10pm to be able to check the garbages. Which I am going to do, because I would never forgive myself if it turned out today was our Iron Bar day. Try our daily specialty omelette? I would love to, Gus, but you're going to be closed. I'm never going to actually be able to get to you today, I just realized, so. Oh well. Fish spaghetti? I would eat fish spaghetti, like if you spaghettified a fish. I don't, necessarily, I don't know if I necessarily trust the process behind that, but I would try it. I mean, I like fish, and, like, turning it into, like, a spaghetti noodle is not going to change the taste, right? Or if you just, like, put, like, fish in a spaghetti. Like, little, like, fish flakes or something. I mean, that sounds kind of gross when I describe it as fish flakes, but... <laughs> That sounds like something you'd feed to a fish, not something that you would consume yourself, but, you know, in theory. I just like the taste of fish. Not judge me. Well, I mean, we could just, like, wait around for the festival all day, but I might as well try and get something productive done. So let's head on over to the mines. Say hello to our friendly neighborhood dwarf. Hope they've been doing okay. And we will do some, like, hardwood farming, I guess. Nah, YouTube, you know what? You can you can skip the ad this time. We're having a very important discussion about fish pasta. You spaghettify a fish by throwing it into a black hole. That is that is what spaghettification is, the dictionary definition.
Oh, I forgot about uh, Gertrude, our Therabbis. We get some bunny emojis for Gertrude, and she's been out here like, well, not all alone. I mean, the dwarf is uh, with her. Dangerous in the mines. Why don't you take a few things? Take another rare crow, please. Miner's tree. Uh, for some reason, I thought Miner's tree might have had some luck with it. That would have been actually kind of clutch, but it does not. It's just just great for mining. The great old mining buff. All right, let's go get some. Uh, I get some hardwood today. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I would not mind getting a ruby. So why don't we try and do this on floor, I guess, 80 would be the place to be, to be here. Is 80 a good floor or should I do like floor like 101 or something? Like this is the same layout as the as the 20th floor, right? We could get some like fire quartz potentially, which would be even better money than the stuff we get on uh, that floor. I just feel more comfortable on this floor. Gotta be very wary of that chest. <laughs> Definitely do not want to accidentally touch that one. That is, that would be be set waiting to happen. Thank you for all the bunny emojis, by the way. Bunnies are so cute. 115 is your favorite geode farming floor. I have a good uh, geode spot on floor 115. Magma geodes, but I think that when I actually geode farm, it's um I'm better suited to getting just doing it on floor 1 where I've got some rec good normal geode spots because my pickaxe is so unupgraded that <laughs> getting magma geodes is a bit a bit out of my depth right now, to say the least. What are we doing? We are just uh, biding time, basically, to wait for the Spirits Eve Festival so we can get A, the Golden Pumpkin, and B, we can search the um, garbage cans. That's the main gist of it. And while we wait, we might as well try and get some, some hardwood or some other goodies, whatever we can get. Swing here. I know hardwood is actually, like, not as common on the... Uh, on these lower floors as it is in the higher floors, but also not just interested in hardwood. I wouldn't mind getting a ruby so I can duplicate that eventually for spicy eels at the Desert Trader. That's something I'm interested in. I, will, I would only need to duplicate like a few rubies. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Guy's side-eyeing me. I don't like it. Just gotta be cautious around him. He's got he's he's only got one HP, so I, I'm just not gonna even risk trying to hit that other one. Take my chances elsewhere. Did you know that if you eat a miner's treat immediately after a spicy eel, it removes the eel's effects? I mean, if you eat any food with a buff, right? Oh my gosh, what? <laughs> I just got done saying hardwood's not common on these floors. I just get three from one barrel. I guess that's the, the high risk, high reward kind of play down here. I'll take it. <laughs> that is huge. It's a huge get. If we can get that spot again, get three hardwood every single time we get that crater barrel. Oh, we're living life. I only wish that that didn't like change every single day. That is huge. That could be, that's a big step towards our uh, Ginger Island fun. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, but I think eating any food with a buff overwrites the previous buff, right? You can stack, like, one buff from one food and one from drinks, but you can't uh, stack multiple food buffs. Do you see him slither up the little path there? The way he moved just made me a little uncomfortable. Double fire quartz? Don't mind if I do. Now uh, you got twelve like twelve hardwood in a day from these from these deep barrels that can give more hardwood. That makes sense. Yeah, I think the actual rates of hardwood from these ones are not as good. But I think the um but obviously like you get more hardwood if you do happen to get it.
going to say something, but then I got distracted by the hardwood discussion, and now I feel like a fool. Oh yeah, I was going to say, in regards to, like, stacking buffs and stuff, there was one video I saw, it got recommended to me. Um, I'm sorry I don't remember the name of the person who posted it. But it was like, um, you know that, uh, for anyone who's familiar with Minecraft, there's, like, one advancement in Minecraft, one achievement, that involves having every buff in the game active at the same time. Like, because, like, you can get all the, like, the, all these various different buffs in, in the game, like, you know, night vision and weakness and yada yada yada. And having them all active at once triggers an advancement. I saw a video where someone tried to do the same thing in Stardew Valley and tried to stack as many buffs as they could at the same time. Yeah, how do we get here? That's what the achievement's called, I believe. Yeah, someone tried to do the same thing in Stardew, and it was it was kind of wild seeing, like, the whole setup for it. It made me want to go and, like, try it out myself eventually. Maybe that'll be, like, a fun little diversion I can do at some point to see how many buffs you can stack in Stardew all at once. Because it was, like, their strategy was, like, kind of insane. It was, like, it, it involved, like... I don't remember which foods specifically were involved, but it was invo involved, like, uh... Involved, like, going to, like, Elliot's heart, like, four heart event or something to get, like, a tipsy debuff. And then, like, going to, like, the dangerous version of the mines to, like, encounter, like, a skeleton mage or something. It was, like, there was, like, so much going on. And I had, like, I had to, like, watch it, like, a couple times to even understand what they were doing. <laughs> Tell us a bedtime story. Squid Ink Ravioli? Squid Ink Ravioli, I think, was one was one of the buffs they had, yeah. I do have a couple other stories. I I, I did make I did make chat GPT write some write some stories, and I have some in reserve. I could always go read some of those. You know, it's been a while since we've had a story time. I'm not good at coming up with stories off the cuff, so I just like, you know, think in between streams, like what's a good prompt for a story, and then I, I do that. So let's see, do we have any any good AI generated stories? I I've only got the two. I've only got the two. Because we, we read the one the first time. There's a... Uh, we read the cost of the quest last time. Do you guys want to hear... I got two two stories here. Do you guys want to hear summer, summer Serendipity? Or The Alluring Vine? I don't remember either of these stories, to be honest with you. It's been a while since they, since they generated them. I remember them being, like, kind of kind of nice, but I don't remember the exact contents of them. And you gotta remember they're AI-generated, so. Alluring Vine? Man, many people are saying Alluring Vine. I could do a poll, I suppose. That's probably the easiest way to, to do it, but a lot of people are saying the Alluring Vine. There's something alluring about the title. Alright, we'll, re we'll read up on the vine. Let's have a look. What was this one about? Let me get it. Oh, my, It's kind of a long one, actually. It's not that long, now that I look at it. Me, I might have to zoom out on this one. Yeah, there we go. I can get it all in frame that way. All right, I'm going to try and split my attention between reading this story to you, reading you a nice, cozy little bedtime story, and doing whatever the heck I'm doing here, just biding time. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a majestic tree who stood tall and proud in the heart of the forest. One day, she noticed a small, alluring vine growing at her base. The vine was exquisite, with vibrant colors and fragrant blooms. It wrapped itself around the tree's trunk, Sorry, I'm trying to divide focus. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. It wrapped itself around the tree's trunk and branches and found that and the tree found herself draw found itself drawn to the vine's beauty and charm. At first the tree and the vine had a lovely relationship. The vine would whisper sweet nothings to the tree, ooh la la, and shower her with compliments, making her feel loved and adored. But as time went on, the vine's grip grew tighter, and the tree began to feel suffocated. The vine started to steal all the nutrients from the soil, leaving the tree weak and vulnerable. The tree tried to break free from the vine, but the vine was persistent, using its charm and beauty to keep the tree in its grasp. The tree was confused and conflicted, 
She knew that something was wrong, but she didn't want to let go of the vine's beauty and love it seemed to offer. Then one day, a wise owl landed on the tree's branches. The owl had seen many relationships like this before, and it could see that the vine was toxic despite its alluring appearance. The owl talked to the tree, listened to her concerns, and gently helped her to see the truth. The tree finally realized that the vine was not the beautiful, loving partner it had seen. With the owl's guidance, the tree found the strength to break free from the vine's hold. The vine fought back, but the tree was... I lost my place. But the tree was now resolute, and the vine's grip eventually loosened. The tree felt a great sense of relief and gratitude to the owl for showing her the way. As the tree regained, regained its strength, she looked back at the vine and saw her for what it truly was. The vine was selfish and possessive, only interested in what it could take from the tree without giving anything in return. The tree knew that she had been blinded by the vine's beauty and charm and that she had allowed it to harm her. She learned that, something, that sometimes relationships can be toxic and that it's important to recognize when they are no longer serving our best interests. She also realized that seeking help is a sign of strength and that it takes courage to break free from toxic relationships. As for the vine, it continued to grow in the forest, wrapping around other trees and suffocating them. It didn't understand the harm it was causing, blinded by its own desires and selfishness. But the tree knew better now and vowed to never let another vine or toxic relationship take hold of her again. And when, it, and when she saw another tree struggling with a vine like hers, she would tell them her story and offer the same help and guidance that the wise owl had given her. The end. There you go. That's a, that's a heck of a moral fable. I forgot how, how like, kind of heavy that one got. <laughs> That's something, hopefully hopefully, no one here relates to that too heavily, but. Am I okay? Yeah, I'm fine. No, that's, I, thankfully I don't have any relationships in my life that I would equate to the, uh, that I would equate to the vine. What was my prompt? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. It, it was, that was a while ago. That's like a few weeks ago at this point. But hey, it's a good story. It's a good little little parable. I like that one. But did the owl ask if they wanted to hear their advice again and default to yes? I'm not sure. I, I mean, the owl sounded like, you know, it was trying to do the right thing. Wasn't that supposed to be a cozy bedtime story? It's more of a horror story. I mean, it all worked out happily ever after in the end, except for the vine, I guess. But I mean, that's like all those, you know, all those fairy tales, like the original fairy tables. They ne they never, they, they never make good bedtime stories because they always like someone always dies in the end of those. Like the Brothers Grimm did not write fairy tales with the intent of, you know. Them being PG-13, I don't think. Fairy tables? Is this? <laughs> did I say fairy tables? I mean, fairy tables sound very cute. I just picture, like, you know, little tables nestled in the nooks of trees for the fairies to use. Do you guys remember that, uh, that, like, hoax that was going back around, like, ten years ago or so of, like, like a fairy, it was like fairy caught on camera, and it was like the worst like CGI fake fairy of all time. But it like so many people were believing it for some reason. It was, it was so funny. It was like a little humanoid fairy. It was it was like actually like looked like something out of like a like a two thousands like screensaver or something. It was so hilariously fake. That's kind of why like I was charming in the end. Brothers Grimm were about cautionary tales and she teaching moments, yeah. History repeats itself. I wonder how long it's going to be before people are writing like whole novels with purely AI. I mean, I guess it could never be. Well, it could be purely AI. I guess in the in the future, far enough once AI is sophisticated enough. But there would always need to be, at least for now, like the human element of like a kind of like guide, kind of like a guiding hand. Like the like AI, artificial intelligence, is like 
in its toddler phase right now, kind of, where it's like, you know, it can do like a decent amount of stuff on its own. It's like surprising the stuff that it can do on its own, but like without without someone to guide it along and sort of point it in the right direction, it's uh it's just gonna cause a mess more than anything, it's like an incomprehensible mess. I'm interested to see what AI will look like when it's and it's reached maturity, for lack of a better term. I just hope it doesn't have to go through puberty. I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to see that. <laughs> AI puberty. Because puberty is all about rebellion, right? Or at least like those teenage angst years. <laughs> when it comes to artificial intelligence, that doesn't seem like you know. I think I've seen a movie or two about that. Alright, I'm actually going to go back to my farm right now, and I'll tell you why. Um, the festival starts at 10pm, but I want to swing by the farm so that I can, number one, sell the stuff and kind of sort of my inventory here so that I have room for anything I might get from the garbage. And uh, number two, I want to pick up a triple shot espresso. Because last time we did Spirits Eve, um, cause, like when you're out of the festival, it, put, it spits you out at like midnight, right? And that was not enough time for us to collect all the trash cans and get back to our farm last time. But I think I'll pick up a little speed buff just to make sure that I can, you know, make it back to my bed safe and sound. Just a quick triple shot espresso, you know, a couple hours before bed. What could possibly be wrong with that? Alright, quartz, fire quartz, torches. Good to go. Writers Guild Association strike is in part to stop AI from being used too extensively. That's fair. I mean, it's like anything else, right? It's like, it's a tool, and you gotta use it, uh, cautiously. You gotta use, it has, it has its, it has its uses for sure, but you can also use it, uh, overuse it and use it nefariously. I forgot to actually get the espresso, because I'm, I'm talking about stuff now. Um, there it is, okay. Would a robot takeover just be the rebellious teen phase? Hey, in theory, but it would also be, you know, they get my fruit trees. I did. It would also be probably pretty catastrophic, depending on which robot we're talking about. <laughs> but novels about me for attempting to run mines with no experience. Hey, you know what? It. <laughs> I learned a lot in that process. I feel like, you know, um I could I could tackle some interesting things. I've I've thought about that. Like I like having looked at like the predictor cuz like I didn't I never looked at the predict predictor for um this challenge. But I looked into the predictor like on my test farm to like see patterns that emerge and that's how I came up with the whole knight's move concept to begin with. And from that, I think there's like I think there's even more information to be gleaned out of there, more pattern recognition possibilities, and I think there's, I don't know, I kind of I kind of like to see, like, try some other stuff out in the future with the, in regards to, to mines and pattern recognition of the staircases and all that stuff, I think there's, there's untapped potential there, to say the least. Yo, have a good night there, cold fish. Corporation wants a mediocre product that they don't have to pay for. They'll take an AI generated thing over something someone actually worked to create, which is bad for the long term. It is bad for the long term. I agree with that. I think that's uh, obviously you want to, you want artists and writers and everyone to still still be able to maintain jobs in their fields, and that AI is making that uh, you know it's it's shakier ground than it has been in the past. But regardless of how good AI gets, I don't think it will ever ever fully... And I'm all on board, or I'm all for like, the fact that I know that AI can get very, very, very sophisticated in the future. Like I, I don't doubt that it's going to be beyond what any of us are even expecting. At the same time, I don't think it will ever fully be able to capture that human element. There's always something that... like. Like, like, you're right, for just something simple and, like, easy, for lack of a better term. 
corporations can default to that, but I don't know. Even with the best AI art, there's always... I feel like there's always going to be something that's that's missing there. Some kind of spark that's, you know, innate. Whether I mean, whether that spark is valuable enough for most people, for, for I mean, I'm not... I, I'm, I don't have my pulse on the whole AI discussion there. I just know that I'm in favor of using AI for its, um, as it, like I said, as a tool, as a helpful tool in the toolkit, but not as a replacement for anything by any stretch. Show me something good, Joe Jamar. So Show me something good. All right, well, at least I, I'll go to bed now knowing that I checked. <laughs> Am I going to be able to make it back even with this speed buff? 1.30 a.m.? Maybe I need, like, two speed buffs. Triple shot plus a plus a super meal? I don't think I'm going to make it back here. I'm going to make it to, like, the bus stop, and that's it. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, we made it back to the farm, so... There's that. Don't take my golden pumpkin. Don't take my golden pumpkin. Not a bad chunk of change. Say hello to the moon real quick. Or how many people are going to fall in love with AI, like in that movie, Her? Never saw that movie, but I could see, you know... <laughs> I think it's already sort of happening in some places, right? Fiddlehead Risotto. We're almost at the end of the Queen of Sauce uh, recipe chain. Just winter to go at this point. Build me a thousand dollars to cover my medical expenses. Harvey! I was five meters from my house. <laughs> That's so rude. Oh my gosh. Someone dropped you off at the clinic last night. Who was it? It had to have been Lewis. He's the only one that would come onto my farm, right? To like go and sell all my fire quartz and stuff. And he didn't have the common decency. He's like, I can I can squeeze some more taxpayer dollars out of her by making her go to a thousand for the medical facility? Oh, come on, Lewis. Rude. Yeah, what if it was camping? What if it was just like a little outdoor backyard camping activity? Sell the golden pumpkin. Pet pie, of course. Grab the last fruit of the season. Grab the mushrooms as well. I'm just hoping there's not four different varietals of mushrooms in there. That'd be kind of annoying. Perfectly disguised oyster, by the way. Not going to sneak past me, but <laughs> not going to pick it up right away here. Oh, there are four varieties of mushroom. Okay, well. Okay, we'll make another trip. I'd have to make another trip for that oyster anyway. Gus, thank you. Thank you, Clawtooth. I forgot to phone Gus today. I should also... I think I'm going to head to the desert today. It's our good humor. You'll have a little extra luck. So it's not a good day for Skull Cavern itself. But I do think I should trade the jades that I have acquired so far. 40 jades? 40 jades seems like a good... A good starting threshold here. I know I said 50 jades, but... What the heck can I say? I mean, I'm, I'm patient in so many other regards... Grant me this one boon. Let me let me trade my jades for staircases today. Then we'll wait for a good luck day. Hopefully get some luck boosting food from Gus as well. I realize again that I forgot to I forgot to call Gus when I went back inside, but that's okay. We're good. Head back inside to store the Chanterelle anyway. Let's sell that. Oh, hello. <laughs> You heard a squeaky voice on the other end. Hey yo, Poke, me sell good hats. <laughs> what is this? You get I didn't even know you could get phone calls. I got like jump scared there. <laughs> Hat mouse, please come and bring coins, Poke. Me like coins, click. This is the most pr this is you just melted my heart, Hat Mouse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can I call him back? I wanna call him back. We gotta go get a hat. We gotta get a hat today. I mean, that's just that's just a sign. I know we're saving our money, but I mean, 
Eggplant Parmesan, no thank you. I don't I don't want to, you know, give too much credence to, to spam callers necessarily, but it's the hat mouse, man. It's the hat mouse. We gotta go take care of that. Yeah, we literally have to buy a hat. That was too cute not to. It's like a kid's lemonade stand. Just like seed and you're like, I don't even if I don't want lemonade right now, it's like I gotta buy the lemonade. <laughs> Except in this case, the lemonade costs a thousand dollars. Never answer the phone if you don't know who's on the other end. True. That could have been Morris trying to trying to get me on the hook for Jojanet 3.0. For the last time, Morris, I'm I'm happy with my cable service provider. I don't need Joja Tenna or whatever the heck you're you're peddling today. I do like the idea that Morris is like the only person that does anything for Joja Mart as well. Alright, buddy, you sold me. You sold I didn't even know you had a phone. The lucky bow? Do we dare infringe on to Chloe's territory? Butterfly bow, mouse ears, tropiclip, blue bonnet for Habu. Already got those bottom two. The good old cap. I mean, the lucky bow does not match Beatrix's drip. Butterfly bow. There's there's something there. Mouse ears, maybe. I don't know. I mean, just to to pay pay homage to the mouse. Pay homage to our little mousy hat friend. That's kind of cute. I'll take it. <laughs> Looking, looking like Minnie Mouse out here. I'll take it. We can rock the mouse ear look for, for a little while. It's almost like a faux Princess Leia sort of thing. It matches the, the color of her hair, like, somewhat? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just crazy seeing that, but... It's very cute. Can't buy a living hat. Should be able to craft one, though. That's my personal opinion. It's literally just grass. Why can't I craft it? If she had gray hair, it would work. Through her hair is more of a... I guess just, like, dark brown. Not quite black, but, like, there's, there's like, a sheen of, of brownness in there. A sheen of brunettedness. There is a Princess Leia head hairstyle there. That's very true. It does fit her pretty well, I will say. The mouse the mouse ears are are a better fit for Beatrix than I would have thought. Being it is black, but that could be a computer thing. I don't know. I think it's like a it's like almost like an optical illusion in a way. Color, cause it's like it's like Chloe's hair color. Chloe's hair it looks black, but it's actually technically, if you like look at the color sliders, it's like a very, very, very dark pink. But like the, the pink is so dark that like the subtle shades of pink within Chloe's hair get lost as just like highlights or like a like a lighting effect almost for to like highlight her black hair. But it is, uh, but true lore aficionados will know that it's pink. Pause all that. We'll, we'll drop off the straw hat for a while. We've been rocking the straw hat look for, for a considerable amount of time. I think mouse ear era. <laughs> Maybe it'll bring us some extra luck in Skull Cavern. Who knows? Can I go to recolor hair at the Wizards? I can, actually. Now that I have access to the Witch's Swamp, I can just get into the basement without having to worry about befriending him. Sorry, just skipping the YouTube ads. Alright. Let's head off to the desert real quick. Um, you know what I should do too? Let's well we'll do the desert first. And then I'll come back and I'll amass some stuff out of my fridge to take to Pierre. Because I mean he's open today and we don't always make it there when he's open, so. Well I guess that'll change when it comes to winter here anyway. Be staying out later and later each day. 
Yeah, we're just we're just picking up the staircases today. We're not actually going to Skull Cavern. Getting the staircases, locking that in. And then on our on a on our next like really good luck day, we'll go for go for some spelunking with our 40 staircases. Count them. Alright. Thank you, my lovely friend. What would I ever do without you? Without this jade staircase method, I'd be I'd be hard pressed to know what to do next, honestly. All right. You know what I think I'm going to do here because winter debris doesn't really spread during the winter. So I think after I sell the stuff that I want to sell today, let's let's just like empty my inventory for right now so I can get the stuff to sell. We'll get we'll sell this stuff just to have a clean slate for winter foraging here. Then I will get get these mushrooms. Probably sell the cave carrots too, honestly. Um, sell the morel, sell all that, sell all these fruit except for the cherries. Take all this to Pierre and sell it. Then I think I'll do the I'll do debris day today. That way tomorrow I can just focus down winter tilling, and uh, not worry too much about it. Wine? I'm collecting the wine. The, the wine is not for sale. That's my cherry wine collection. That's Beatrix Brew. Which I, I guess Beatrix Brew would be more like a beer. That's the that's the fractured vintage. Year two. Alright. Sell all our goodies here. Let's just go on a big old selling spree. Oh, baby. Cleared 100,000 with that one. I'll take that. And let's go get our tools back, then do a little debris clearing, and we should be done with fall. Chateau Beatrix, 23. Like it. I think that one could stick. <laughs> Can I... Can I get, tell you guys something silly that I've done? I've, uh, cause like I've been working on editing the stuff for like this, uh, like these VODs into the first actual, like edited episode of this series. And as part of that, I have to like sometimes go and record like B roll footage or, um, for certain things I want to like show off if I'm editing something together. Um, and the folder that I'm, that I am storing all my, like my B roll clips in. I call it, like, B-roll, but it's, like, B-E-A roll, as in, like, Beatrix. <laughs> it's, it's just, this is me describing it now. It sounds so, like, stupid and silly, but I'm, like, I just thought it was, like, cute. And I'm, like, when I was doing it, I'm, like, you know what? That's kind of fun. Because I have some other, like, B-roll folders that are, like, for, for other videos and stuff. But I felt like to, you know, mix it up and to delineate it as, as the one for this series. I was, like, yeah, I will do that. It's like, it doesn't even make any sense. It's like not something anyone's ever going to see or realistically care about, but I just like, it makes me smile. <laughs> and I think there's a value in that. I enjoy the dumbness of this, sincerely. You gotta, you gotta do things, even like behind the scenes, like, it's not like I'm like, like the, per the person you get, the Argon that you get during the stream, I mean, it's a, it's a character in, in some ways, for sure. Like I put on, I try to put my best, most entertaining version of myself forward on stream. But it's not that dissimilar from like how I am in just like real day-to-day -day life either. Just a slightly more energetic version, but I still have all these like little like quirky idiosyncrasies that I like to like to do in my day-to-day -day life. That's kind of one of them. B roll. Anyway, that's your that's your weird that's your little Argon lore factoid for the day. That one will be all on the midterms as well. Just you know, it's it'll be for it'll be for extra credit. It's not going to be part of the actual like 
part of the actual scoring process, but it will be on the tip. I don't think in school I was ever given the option to do anything for extra credit. Like, it's something that, like, you hear, you, like, see in movies sometimes or shows or whatever. It's like, can I do this for extra credit to try and pass the course or whatever? That, maybe I'm just, like, maybe it's just not a thing when I went to school or, like, where I went to school. But it was just, like, maybe it's something you have to ask for. Maybe it's something you just, like, do apropos of nothing at all. I don't know. Anyone ever done any extra credit assignments before? Does anyone have experiential wisdom here? I want to get to this seed. What's what's the best way to go about that? It's a bit of a it's a bit of a brain teaser right there. I think I'm gonna have to. I don't even know if I can get to that seed now that I'm looking at it, but I'm gonna try. Try my gosh darn best. <laughs> Some extra credit last week. Yeah, teachers that gave extra credit. A lot of your teachers gave extra credit assignments that you could choose to do. Yeah, I, I never had that. I was, or at least I don't remember having that. I would have loved that because I was like one of those kids in school that just like loved to do most of the work. Like it was pretty rare for me to procrastinate homework. I still did from time to time. Various things that I just didn't like to do, but most of the time, like, I would, like, get home and, like, do my homework, because, like, I found it fun. <laughs> I was one of those kids. I wasn't quite the kid that would be like, excuse me, Mrs. Mrs. Smith, you didn't give us, you didn't assign homework for the weekend. How are we going to learn our quadratic equations? I wasn't that kid, but... In a different world, I might have been. If I, if I were slightly more outspoken, that could have been me. <laughs> Alright, I think debris is pretty good here. I think we are all set for winter, as far as I can tell. Be kind of nice, too, because, like, the debris won't spread, and also the grass will be gone for a little while. Um, which, don't get me wrong, I'm happy that the grass is here to prevent the spread of debris. But it also makes navigating the farm just that much more sluggish. All right, we good to go? Get it done. Oh, I forgot I sold the golden pumpkin today, too. That's kind of big. 2580 Gs on top of what we sold to Pierre earlier today. Not too shabby. All right. Winter has officially arrived. All right, let's take a quick cruise at Gus's. We were at dinner for almost all of fall. Glazed yams. All right, that's not interesting to me. We have a good luck day. We do not at all, so let's go take care of business here. Also, I should store this wood in the fridge. Of course, as you always do. Also, I want to take a quick... Uh, Let's take a quick moment here. Let's go diving. I, I, you know what? No, we'll do it at the end of the year. I was going to compare, like, our the state of our farm from, like, the start until now. But we'll, we'll do that at the end of the year, too. Do a little, little farm catch-up. All right. So what does winter look like here for the most part? I think we go... We still continue to get our mushrooms. I think that's an important part of uh, the process here. Get our mushrooms... Then, is there a path through here still? There is, okay. It was just full of grass earlier, so it was harder to navigate. Store our mushrooms like so. Then check the garbages, and then basically from there, you go and uh, I'm going to go and winter till my little heart out. Just till down on the beach, get what I can, and... Then sell it. <laughs> maybe not sell it, like, right away today. Maybe we'll, like, be, like, post-dated selling by one day, but... I don't know. See how it goes. This is my first time, like, really winter forage... Or, like, tilling for winter forage... In this way. Or it's gonna be my first time doing it in a... 
large capacity in bulk, as it were. Let me actually, let me do a little bit of a different path here. This, if I do it this way, then it'll like put me on a nice little path to uh, towards the beach at the end of the farm. Why are we saving the common mushrooms? They're a good food source. They're, they're a decent food source. But if push comes to shove and I need that to to breach my 500,000 goal for the year, I'm not going to hesitate to to sell the common mushrooms as well. I just got to make sure cuz I cuz doing it this way I didn't catch Lewis's trash, I don't think. A patrol community cleanup. We'll try that one just in case, but All right, and now we're down here. Um, just get rid of the mixed seeds, honestly. I just don't like them cluttering my inventory. All right. And now this is where the magic happens. Let's see how... It, I'm, I might be a bit rusty on this one. We'll see how it goes here. Let's see. So we're going to do like so. Till we get... We have to go until we get actual like winter forge. Clay doesn't work. If we were doing clay farming... That'd be one way to go about it, but we want to get and wait until we get either a snow yam or a winter root, I'm pretty sure. And there are more sophisticated ways of doing this. I tried to look up, like, because I've seen, I've seen, like, Habu do it, and I've seen Al Algo do it on his stream, um, where you, like, do, like, long vertical lines, but I don't know, like, the actual process behind that. But now we do, like, we do... Hey, it's Knight's Moves. The Knight's Move makes a triumphant return in the form of uh, farming here. Okay, so now the pattern is broken there. Because it's supposed to go up by, like, six, right? But it only went up by four this time. So you go, like, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Is that it? One, two... Right here, I think? Yeah. And this should be our new starting spot. Four, five... Six, so you do six of those, then you head over here, line yourself up with the first one, and like it's like the corner between these two. You do this one, two, three, four. Then you come back and you repeat the same exact pattern, but one spot up from, from your previous pattern. Five, six, one, two, four. Then you go back down to your starting spot, you move one, two, three over. Go. You just start the pattern fresh. This is this is the way I know to do it. There there are better ways, like I said, and they and they get you probably more winter forage faster. I tried to look up like tutorials to do that version just to to maximize our profits here, but I could not find a, a single thing. Great music for it. <laughs> kind of eerie music for it. Maybe you were talking about the music from beforehand. Ooh, you got nice calming music now, though. Anyway, yeah, so for those who didn't know what was going to be going on here, this is how we make our money. <laughs> this is the big moneymaker in winter. Speedrunners hate them. Actually, speedrunners love this. His music has a hole on my brain that I don't like. It did kind of have that vibe. It was it was almost like an anxiety-inducing kind of music. I kind of I kind of feel you on that one. The eerie dramatic music as you explain the intricacies of farming, now offset by the nice soothing ASMR-like tones this song that we all we have all grown to, to know and love that one's gonna mess me up but also you know what eat the eat the trash bread we got lots of blackberries maybe this is this could be where our uh, our common mushrooms come back to to help us out in the future here Usually just plant a lot of winter seeds. If if that were an option for me, that would be a hundred percent the way to do it. But the last is not an option. So yeah, if a if a spot is blocked like this one is, then you gotta till somewhere else just to keep the uh keep the pattern going. Five, six, and you just resume where the pattern would have picked up next anyway. 
some deal there. Start making a little line down here, it's fine. Well, I guess I shouldn't always go out of my way to like go that far down just to till one little spot. I just till that spot there instead. Whoops. Sometimes sometimes I'll just like miss the pattern like that too, which is you know, be expected. I'm gonna try to minimize that as much as possible. Voodoo. It does feel like witchcraft every time I do this. Um oh, wait, is it? I kind I kinda lost myself in the pattern there. Once it gets towards this section of the beach, it starts to kind of mess with my head a little bit. But usually I'm able to keep up the keep up the pattern somewhat. Alright, that's not tillable. That. And I don't know how much of this I'll actually do like on stream because while this isn't as uh did I mess I messed something up here, hold on. Wait, am I one behind or am I one ahead right now? This would be the next Right? Am I crazy? Hold on a second. That one there. Right here. It, catch it eventually? Okay. <laughs> Not the most elegant, but take it. And I think one more. Yeah. Nearing the end of our real estate here. Yeah, this isn't the most, like, entertaining thing in the world to watch, obviously, but we'll just, let's, let's not, let's call a spade a spade, right? Okay. That's pretty much the end of our, like, I could go back here and, like, try and, like, restart a pattern, like, over here. I don't know how viable that is. I was one behind. That's my bad. So is this is this the best I can do for today or is like I don't know is like should I like come back here and like try to restart the pattern or should I just call it quits at 5 p.m. Put in a nice little nine to five. You know what I'm kind I kind of like that. We'll see how much money we get out of this. Won't be able to sell it today, but it will be able to sell it uh, soon. Soon enough. We can just build up a nice little bulk storage of these things and then we can sell them all at once. Impressive, impressive stuff, Fox. Yeah, this is the magic of winter tilling. And I'll tell you, that's a lot faster than geode farming. Holy moly. It's a lot faster, it's more profitable, it's basically just better in every way. The only the only downside is that you can only do it in winter, obviously. All right, so let's store all this in here for right now. We'll just start building up our collection right there. Ooh, collect some jades in the meanwhile here. Start our collection anew. Be sad when that gets patched out. Yeah, that's probably that's probably coming with the uh with like the 1.6 update. All right. What you got for me, Gus. A pink cake. I mean, I can think of one girl who would like that, but uh, not this girl. All right, we're so, and we're gonna wait for that star drop luck day before we try and do skull cavern or anything. Obviously, be a fool's errand to do otherwise. And lather, rinse, repeat, baby. Forget that the tree, the tree seeds themselves, they won't grow in winter, right? They'll just spread. Is I mean, I, I still gotta take care of business there. I don't know why I, why I always loop around the house. I'm just not used to this little path right in there. Augers pink cake. <laughs> I mean, pink cake sounds pretty good to me. Like personally, I think a nice pink melon cake. 
little cantaloupe flavored cake, even though cantaloupe's not a pink melon. A watermelon flavored cake. Such a thing must exist, right? A watermelon cake? I don't think I've ever encountered such a specimen out in the wild, but watermelon cake? I mean, watermelon's such a... It's, it's a prolific flavor. You gotta imagine it's out there cake form somehow or another. I picked up some, speaking of watermelons, I picked up some of those, uh, I picked up some of those, you know, like the watermelon, like sour candies, like the little gummy sour candy watermelon slices. I picked some of those up just like a couple days ago because I hadn't had them in, in like years. And they're just as good as I remember. They're not something I want to make like, you know, an everyday occasion necessarily, but they are something that I, uh, I'm quite fond of every now and again. Things like that, you gotta you gotta keep them infrequent enough that they're still a treat when you do pick them up, but uh, frequent enough that you don't forget the magic. All about that fine balance, everything in moderation, right? Your math is correct. That was approximately twelve thousand dollars of Winter Forge. We got to do better. We got to do better than twelve thousand. What if I start? Can I start like any further along on the beach here, or can I do it like maybe I can do it? I don't know, maybe, maybe I have to, like, have to do more. 12,000 12, is not enough for my goal. If I, want, if I want to reach half a million by the end of the year, I don't think that's going to cut it. Granted, it's not like every day is going to be the same exact amounts, but it's going to be relatively similar, right? There we go. What? <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just go up here. Is that, count that right? I think so. You just do this until it pops up again. That should be good. Three, four, five, six, lovely. What are we aiming for? I want $500,000 in my pocket by the end of, uh, by the end of winter here, basically, by the end of year two. Not for any particular reason, necessarily, but it's just a sort of self-imposed goal. I knew that it was quite ambitious when I first, um... When I first set it. Four, five, six... But I didn't want to set just a goal of like, you know, like 250,000 or something silly. If we're gonna if we're gonna set a goal like that, we gotta go all out. There's gotta be some stakes, some tension. Some wondering, will he make it? Will he not make it? I think five hundred thousand is just within the realm of doability. Need to make roughly eighteen thousand a day. I think it's possible. I really, really do. I gotta, I gotta put my nose to the grindstone. I can't be settling for these Namby Pamby Winter Forge numbers. No, no, no. Seventy of each? No, we gotta, we gotta up that to at least like a hundred of each. Is, is there a realistic way of doing that? I don't know. But I'm gonna try. Gosh darn it, I'm gonna try. It might not be the most efficient winter tilling you've ever seen. But you can't deny that it's on brand. We do things a little bit differently around here. Optimism, exactly. You know what? Let's let's gauge how do we think we're going to do. We're at the start of winter here. We're not going to get the results for this poll anytime soon. But will... Just, let's just let's just see how people are feeling. Will we reach 500k by the end of the year? It's daunting. It's it's gonna it's gonna take everything we've got and more probably. But I feel I feel confident and optimistic about my chances. 
And it's good to see that the optimism trickles out through the community as well. With a firm, as of as of the very start here, right out the gate, 83% of voters believe. That's six. Go ahead and refuel with our blackberries here. I already have 100k, that seems decent. Yeah, it's not like we have to, we're not trying to make 500k. We're trying to reach 500k, like, total, so we only have to make 400k total. Oh, you didn't, fa you didn't factor the, five, the, the, the 100k we already have into your math, so maybe, maybe it's more realistic than I thought. Maybe we gotta aim for 750k. <laughs> Maybe we just got... Let's just go for a million. Let's just go for the full million. Why not? Just du double our, our goal here. Am I that optimistic? No, I, I think, you know... There's only so much I can you can do with the power of pure will and optimism. One million dollars. Do you think we could get... Yeah, do you think we could get a million in year two? <laughs> If I reset that poll, could we get to a million in year two? I mean, 500,000 already seems so far off. That may be too high of a goal. Maybe that's the kind of goal we need then. Six. No. All right, our new goal is a million. Our new goal is one million gold by the end of year two. No, I can't. I can't. I can't realistically commit to that, can I? I'd have to run the numbers myself to know if that's uh, that's even remotely within the realm of possibility. Something tells me that it is not. But a man can dream. It's like that guy who made the video trying to get, like, 10 million melons in Minecraft in, like, 100 days of playing Minecraft or something. Anyone see that video? It was, like, showed up in my recommended. I'm like, this man's trying to get 10 million melons in 100 days? What the heck? It's literally impossible. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but... It was a pretty good video. What I remember of it. My prediction is you're going to get the obelisk by the end of year three at the latest. I think we could probably, we should be able to get it within year three, I think. I think that's, a, that's a, that's an attainable goal. I don't know if anyone's debating that one too fiercely. Whether it'll take all the way to like the end of year three, I don't think so. At the latest, you may be right. You stock? How are we looking? 82 and 84? It's not good enough. Not good enough. I only need about 14,285 gold per day to, to get 400k in the year. It's doable. All right. So if we go back here, can I, like, if I just start, like, one tile up now? I mean, it's, we're gonna have to, we're gonna run into some trouble over there, I'm sure. But let's just, let's see if we can just make a little bit more here. It doesn't, we don't have to go, like, the full pattern again. But if we can get, like, a little bit more of a pattern here, I'll be a happy camper. Three, four, Five. Okay, this is this is, is going to be a little cumbersome. I got to have my my hands on the right buttons here. That's not a tillable spot. Four. Now I just got to remember like where I even started. <laughs> Maybe I should like bring one of my torches. Four, five, six. I used to do that when I was like first learning play farming. Is I would I would bring a torch to mark my initial spot. And then I would, uh, I would use that to, like, refer back to when I need to, like, restart a spot or something. Or, I think it's this spot. 
five, six, and here. Nope. <laughs> so wait, it would have been here then. There we go. Okay. Four. It's getting a little complex. I'll grant you that. It's getting. Is is anyone following along? Are you guys following along at home? You're probably doing better than I am, honestly. Shoot. That should have been that one, so that's this one. That's that one, then that's that one. Alright, we made it to 101 of each. I'm willing to, to check that in. I'm willing to clock that in. If I aim to get 100 snowy ams and 100 winter roots every day, I should be on course for 500k by the end of the year. Well, we, we, we'll have to make up for our first day. Because our first day we only got like 70 of each, right? Although if we bolster, if we maybe we won't have to make up for that necessarily. If we bolster it with the mushroom funds, and well, there's no fruit tree from funds in winter, unfortunately. You're lost. <laughs> I'm so just hang in there. Promise. I promise. I kind of know what I'm doing. I'm like 80% confident I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> All right. That's, that's a pretty good haul. Pretty good haul for the first two days of winter here. See if we can knock out a third day here. Although if we can get Skull Cavern luck, I wouldn't be wouldn't be upset about that either. Got today. Well, hey, 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 it's just an ordinary day. Ash browns. Do I look like a armor? Get out of here. Ooh, we got star drop luck. Okay. So we should try... This is a good This is a good way to mix things up now. This is actually very good timing. Thank you, Wellwick. Let's mix it up. Let's try and get something from Skull Cavern today. I'm here for it. I've got my lucky star shards. What do, we, what do I need today? I don't need the watering can. Don't need the hoe. Don't need the axe. I'll keep the scythe to, like, break crates and barrels. Eat the pickaxe in case I in case I run into a tricky situation. Um, city and edge could be useful to like block something coming in. Staircases are obvious. Got my star shards for good luck. Don't need the bombs because we're not going to want to bomb rocks anyway, right? Go have a good night there, Maggie. And welcome back, Purple. You're just in time. We're going to take our first crack at Skull Caverns. Staircase fueled edition. I also need the, uh, you know what? Coffee might be a good shout out. Uh, we'll just bring all the full stack of coffee that we got. Bring the warp totem. I could probably do with better food than blackberries. I could bring bring my super meals. That gives me another speed buff actually as well. Although the fried eel is what I really want, so let's we'll bring the fried eel for the luck buff. Bring the I don't know how long that luck buff is gonna last realistically, but hopefully it's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna just bring the common mushrooms. I think they'll be a reasonable food source, hopefully. We're just gonna be relying on treasure floor luck? Basically, yeah. <laughs> Basically, I'm gonna try and get whatever I can from treasure rooms with this uh, with this amount of staircases. If I don't get anything out of it, I'll reset the day and we'll just we'll just try again until we get something out of treasure room. Basically, that's that's my plan. I've never tested it out. I don't know how uh, how tenable it's gonna be, but we're gonna give it a try here. Okay, is this? Am I missing anything? Final inventory check. Is this okay? That's gonna be our luck buff. Got a speed buff there if we need it. Got the food. We got the staircases. Lucky charm, pickaxe, sword. I guess I don't really need the scythe if I'm bringing the sword. Something like this. How do we feel about that? I think we're I think we're feeling good. You know what? Chat seems to be. I'm also going to end this poll real quick. End this poll. 500k by the end of the year. 86% believe that we will. Now, does that factor in that we're going to have to give up some time to Skull Cavern? Because 
Because on a, on a day like this, I mean, it might this might be the only day that we give it to Skull Cavern, depending on how things go here. I don't know, but... Well, if I get something good partway down, will I use the rest of the staircases or lock in the day? That's the that's the hard part. Check the trashes now. Uh, I'm not going to check the trash because I feel like I'm going to have to reset this day. I wouldn't want to check the trash, like, all the time. For, like, every single reset. So I'll just check it when I know that I've locked it in already. Well, let's give it a whirl here. Worst case, worst case scenario, we're going to end up resetting, but... <laughs> All right. Need a speed buff, please. I'll wait until I actually get to... We'll wait until we get down to floor 10 proper before we do the luck buff. That way I don't have to worry about... Um, that way we get the most most bang for our buck, as it were. Oh yeah, we haven't been to Skull Cavern yet. I mean, we technically have, but that was on a Groundhog Day loop, so it didn't really count. Alright. We're not just going to use staircases all willy-nilly here. I have to I have to be judicious with my staircase usage. I have to, I have to look, basically, for... Hold on a second. I have to look for freebies on basically every floor. Such as this one. There's actually a freebie on this floor, so I'm glad I checked. <laughs> yeah. Good start. Well, this is this is a small enough floor I can just ch Ooh, baby! You fell down three levels. That's that's horrible, but you know what? A shaft is a shaft. No matter how small, we'll take it. Alright. Relatively large floor here. I do not see. Oh, I thought I thought that was a freebie. It was actually the shadow of a bug. Common mistake. We're just gonna go ahead and there are, there are a lot of crates and barrels over there, but I can't get to them without breaking some rocks. So don't worry about it. Okay, I want to here select that one. Eh. eh. Stay away from me. Yeah. Off to a reasonable start. No freebies. Okay. I'll, I'll get better and faster about this as we go, I'm sure. A little bit of growing pains right now. Just hang in there. Hang in there. You've held on for so long. No freebies. There are a quicker way of doing this. I feel like that would be great, but I don't know of a quicker way at this exact juncture. They get an extra six to seven forge bulls every day, like 103 or 104. It should be enough to make up for one skull cavern day. Okay. That's that's reasonable. That's an attainable goal, I would say. This is a small floor. Check for the freebie. Get me out of here, or that guy eats me alive. Uh, it's floor 10, so we get our fried eel buff. Let's go. We are officially on treasure room watch. Fingers crossed. Everybody cross your fingers in chat. You got to keep them crossed for the duration, and then we won't have to reset it all, hopefully. 35 staircases to go. How many treasure rooms can we get in that span of time, in that span of staircases? Feel optimistic. Uh, stay away from me, please. <laughs> I don't feel optimistic about this. Okay, I might just I might just staircase out of this one. This guy is spooking me. See ya. Alright. Uh, and I don't think you can have freebies on a prehistoric floor, can you? I'm pretty sure you can't. And I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna say that you can't <laughs> because I'm not about to deal with that. I forgot to bring my uh I forgot to bring oh thank you for all the crossed fingers by the way I appreciate it. It's gonna bring us some great luck here. I can already feel it. There is a freebie on this floor. Yeah. This is why we check. Can I get to it is the question. Uh, have a look here. 
think I can. I think I can. Yeah, I can. Love to see it. Sneaky little serpent down there. You see him? Looking for any... I'm just look. I'm doing a little, you know... Free eye for free. I really should just do this every single time, though. As much as, much as I... It, it pains me to do so. It is for the greater good. Yeah, you need to slay them all on a prehistoric floor to continue. That's what I thought. Wasn't entirely confident, though. Thank you for the, uh, the verification. This is a small enough floor. This is a relatively large floor, I think. And no freebie in sight. In theory, the larger the floor, the more freebie possibility there is, right? If I know how my freebies work. I mean, even if there is a freebie on this floor, depending on where it is, on a spiral floor, I don't think there's a... Uh, there's that much hope of actually getting to it. I don't even see one, so I'm not worried about it. If it was like a free shaft, then maybe. You know what they say about free shaft free shafts? At least I hope you do, because I don't. Nothing doing on that floor. That's fine, it's fine. Can you give me a treasure room. Treasure room for a la 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 la. I was trying to I was gonna start doing like an auctioneer voice, but the end of a like a four hour long stream I think I think my auctioneering days are are numbered another spiral floor huh you just you just love me that much you hear free shafts are real upstanding I've I've heard the same thing <laughs> I have heard the exact same thing Getting shafted is kind of the opposite of being free. And you put it like that. I still want the shafts, don't get me wrong. Don't don't hear that game and think that I'm I'm dissing the shafts. The shafts are my best friend in this in this instance especially. Come on, you got you gotta give me at least one treasure room here. I don't want to be completely bereft of treasure rooms on my very first my very first delve here. How many staircases are we down to? We're down half of our staircases. Down to tw down 26 floors in 20 staircases. That's, you know, reasonable. What do you got for me? If I got, like, a lucky ring out of one of those, then that might be good enough to... to go for a two. These serpents, man, they also present a, a serious problem. When you're at level zero combat, those serpents are a, a, a deadly force to be reckoned with. Oh gosh, I see some iridium ore on this floor. That's gonna be that's gonna be a sight for sore eyes. The serpents can smell fear. We just gotta show no fear. No, the iridium. Ooh, thank you for the shaft, please. Can we get fifteen? 15 floors, and you're my best friend. I mean, I guess to go in deeper at this point doesn't really mean that much, but I guess it, it means we get closer to floor 100, but we're probably not getting to floor 100 realistically. Four levels, I'll take it. Uh, I'll take the elevator. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and eat these cave carrots to save some of my mushrooms. Longer the free shaft, the better. The more bang for your buck. It's always true. Is it confirmed that like if you if there is a treasure room on one of the floors that the shaft would like pass, does it stop you on that floor every time? I remember d having like a discussion about that during the price perfection days, but I don't know if there was ever like a definitive answer brought forward on that. And using staircases to be taking the stairs. I'm sorry, I was panicking. <laughs> I was panicking. Did you see those serpents rushing for my face? I was like, no thanks. I was sweating bullets. Come on now. Uh, 
Uh, oh, there's a shaft. There's a free shaft on this floor, please. Me with a nice little, nice little 15. I would not say no to that. Not at all. Ooh, hardwood, too. It would be great if we could lock that in, but I'm not, I mean, we're not here for hardwood. Eight levels is, is acceptable. Eight levels is highly acceptable. That's the case for floor 100, so it won't skip you past floor 100 at least the first time. That's good to know, actually. Uh, there's a freebie. It's a bit of a... We gotta take a bit of a field trip to get there, but there is a freebie. Save ourselves a staircase. No serpents on this floor, either. Do you think you get combat experience if you just, like, knock the mummies down, but don't kill them with the explosion? Ooh. I'm gonna take the risk. Taking a chance here. Okay, it worked. 40 damage! Get me out of here! Holy moly. I feel like you wouldn't get the combat experience if you don't actually finish off the mummies, right? There's no way. We're down to our last, almost, almost our last ten staircases. I mean, I shouldn't put too much stock in it because this is our very first time in Skull Cavern, our very first actual, like, legit attempt at Skull Cavern, but... The fact that we haven't seen even a single treasure room, not bode well for our chances. Area is overrun with monsters. Area is overrun with the sound of my footsteps as I flee. Cyanora chumps. Holy moly, there's a lot going on on this floor. But not a staircase to be seen. No freebie for BB. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here on that one. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Um, That's probably my sign to dip out of here as well. If we don't hit a treasure floor, would you reset to save staircases? That's the plan, yep. I don't want to waste staircases on a treasure room this day. Actually, are the are the treasure rooms are they dictated by the day? Like because like none of these floors have been treasure rooms on this attempt, does that mean they won't be if I like reset the day and uh and try again? Or is it determined on a case by case basis? That's something I never actually considered. I feel like they're on a case-by-case -case basis, right? Is a freebie over there. Is it attainable? I think so. Say yes. We're going to give it a try. Oh my gosh! Misty Frequencies with the $55 Super Chat. Thank you so much. That's hey, I did not expect that in the, uh, in, the, in the wee hours of the stream here. Thank you so much. Finally caught alive. I've watched all my Stardew VODs while working. That is quite the accomplishment. Thanks for all the entertainment and fostering such a great community. Ia Ora and Macha, or Macha Roja from Aotearoa. I probably totally butchered that. <laughs> Aotearoa, New Zealand. Well, uh, greetings. Howdy doody from the land up north, up here in Canada. Thank you so much for the support and the generosity. I really, really appreciate that. I'm glad that you've been enjoying the VODs and the content, and I hope that you uh, continue to enjoy them in the future generosity like that that makes it uh makes it so i can do them as frequently as i do so thank you so much thank you so much misty it's random skull cavern treasure rooms are completely random regardless of day resets or entering floor one both okay okay that is good to know i thought that was the case that they were completely random but I'm, it's glad to have i i assume you know what you're talking i mean you spoke with such authority and such confidence and I'm like, this person knows what they're talking about. Come on. I've got 
I've got literally two staircases left. You're not you're not gonna give me even a single just a morsel, just a taste of a treasure room. They're really gonna do me dirty like this, huh? Jeez. The treasure it's nearby. It has to be. I can I can taste it. I can taste the I can taste the gold electrolytes in the air emanating from the chest. Maybe it's even iridium electrolytes. And to the sound of this music too, you're not going to give me a treasure room? All right. Well, let's uh <laughs> let's see is there a freebie? No freebie. Well, let's take let's do a little YOLO mining, I guess. You never know. You never know. I don't. I. I don't know if I'm gonna make a habit of this necessarily, <laughs> especially once we get to like floors where there's like iridium bats and serpents and stuff hunting me down. I'm probably better off just resetting the day. But on a floor like this, I'll take my chances at least. You know, try try and get one floor deeper maybe. I can type slash map screenshot to take screenshots for me faster. Is there is there a similar shortcut that allows me to open the the folder that quickly. I guess I can just like alt tab to the folder. Come on. I, I just want to try. I just I just want to get one floor deeper. Just just one floor deeper. It's not meant to be less. Slash map screenshot. Can I like copy that and paste it. Maybe not. Just wrote Beatrix that dot is that my seed number don't look at that <laughs> that's fine I mean it's probably not that hidden anyway that's totally fine I do not see a oh I do see a freebie actually just very very well hidden off on the side That's okay, Martha. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the seed was probably... I mean, I've shown enough screenshots on the actual stream that it was probably probably information that you could realistically know if you wanted to anyway, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. I've, I'm, I'm confident enough with our community that I don't think there will be any, like, bad actors who use that information to, like, spoil things about the challenge. At least I hope not. You assume that's a timestamp, not a seed? Maybe it is. I guess that would make sense for a uh, for a screenshot for it to be a timestamp. Like I know the date part is the timestamp, obviously. Are you kidding me with this? <laughs> what is this? Oh my god! I can't. E I couldn't even. Even if I had a staircase there, <laughs> that's the that's the biggest f you I've ever had from this game. I think that's what the heck. That's just rude. All right, reset me. We'll try one. We'll take one more crack at it. Pay no attention to B-roll farm. I usually I usually take that out of my folder before I start streaming. All good. J a golden prison. <laughs> yeah, no, take a hint. All right. I mean, they say take a hint. I say run it back, baby. All right, obsidian edge. Um, or store, store the blackberries there for now. Need the desert warp totem. Need the staircases. Oh, need the coffee. Ideally. Set up my inventory ever, ever so the way I like it. Mushrooms. Ring. Fried eel. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go the extra mile this time. I'll even put on my space boots. Drop in everyone, this mouse is going to space camp. Just 
just got an auto grabber on your own Skull Caverns run. I just don't want to end the stream without at least like one treasure room. Whether that treasure room contains anything worthwhile or not, I mean, it's been it's been so long. Like the whole uh, the whole process of going through the mines and everything and building up this collection of staircases with gems, the Crystallarium saga, like get a second Crystallarium. It's all been in service of this, what we're doing right now. I just, I just feel like I owe it to myself and I owe it to all of you to at least see one treasure room. One treasure room. It's all—it's not too much to ask, is it? I, I, I ate the fried eel a bit too soon there, but that's okay. Not the end of the world. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise, even. I think you're right, by the way. I think that was a timestamp on the on the screenshot name because I think it's a different number on this one that I just took. That's good to know it wasn't actually the seed. Ooh, freebie spotted. Freebie at six o'clock. Go get it. Ain't no mind to me, you slow-moving sods. I know there's a freebie on this floor for a fact. Music's a little tense for for my liking, but I mean it is Skull Cavern, I suppose. <laughs> mm, all right, I'll take a hint. Got here. It's okay. You know, par part of me, I mean, most of me is sad when I don't see a freebie or a shaft or anything on the floor when I take these screenshots, but part of me is a little bit relieved to not have to, like, navigate the swarms of monsters and stuff, because it is scary. I didn't I didn't take into effect that Skull Cavern would be so intimidating. Oh, jeez, are you kidding me? <laughs> I didn't take into it account that Skull Cavern would be so intimidating at such a low combat level. It really is. If I can get another Crystallarium in the mines, that would be great. That would be that would be a big win for sure. If I could get a Crystallarium from a from a treasure chest. I would absolutely take that. Crystallarium, Auto Petter, Auto Grabber. Obviously, Iridium Bars. Even Slime Eggs for potential. Uh, oh my God! There's a Mystic Stone on this floor. <laughs> that would be that would be nice. Be able to to make use of. Yeah, even Slime Eggs for potential Slime Hut shenanigans would be would be reasonable. They're on the tier list for sure. Come on. Ooh! First treasure room! We made it! <laughs> Floor 11! Yes! Okay. It's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting moment, but there's no telling what's actually in this treasure chest. First off, of course, Cinder, Cinder Tatsu, thank you for the $5 super chat. You got this, Argon. Thank you for the amazing content, as always. I love this challenge. Hope all is well. Thank you as well. <laughs> I appreciate the generosity. I appreciate the support. Maybe that's the last little bit of extra luck and support that we needed to get this first treasure room. Please, please. We're not looking for seeds, we're looking for actual goodies this time. Show me something good. Please. Oh my gosh, yes! Oh, that's huge! That's huge! Crystallarium! We, that we get more jades now! That's so big! <laughs> I didn't think we'd actually get something that useful out of our first one. I mean, the odds were not in our favor there. That is that is actually extremely big. For <laughs> All right. Now the question is: We still have thirty-one staircases. Do we do we take this? Do we just lock this in, or do we try and press on for yet another treasure room? This is this is the this is the gamble we take, right? I, I part of me thinks we just we just lock that in and just and just I don't know 
I go down one floor, then go up. You know what? I can co-sign that. See if we can get a double. Okay, no double. I'm going to check for a freebie, and then I think we just lock it in. All right, no freebie. There's just a lone dinosaur. <laughs> I want to show this guy off, dude. He looks so sad over here. The single pepper rex all by his lonesome guarding this floor. He's like the only thing on this floor. That's so... It's a sad story, man. Tinder Tatsu, thank you for the extra two dollar super chat. Thought I could be the lucky you needed. It was it was a perfect perfectly timed super chat. What can I say? All right, yeah, I think I think we locked that in. We get we got that nice and early in the day too. We still got time for for forage farming here. Crystallarium. I that that's insane that we got that as our first treasure room. a 10, 10, care, 10 staircase sunk cost every time you leave the Skull Cavern. That's true. That is true. But I mean, this is this is a big enough win. And to get it, it was on floor 11. It was almost like the earliest you could get a treasure room. But I think I'm okay with that. Alright. That is also one fried eel down the drain. But you know what? It's worth it. For, this, for a Crystallarium, I think that's a big win. All right, let's go. Let me go ahead and get my get my stuff all sorted out here. Um, let's well, let's first get the before anything else. Boom! Add it to the collection. Three crystallariums. I didn't think I would see that this uh this 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 early on in our skull cavern escapades. All right, store that away. Store that. That. Grab all the rest of the tools here. The goodies for our usual daily activities. Like to do it like this, I think. I'm, I'm very particular how I set up my inventory. I apologize. I apologize. Gus, what do you got? Three crystal. Look at how beautiful that is. A little triplet of crystallariums. Ash browns again. They're stale from the last time you sold them, probably. Got a little bit of a speed buff still going from our triple shot too. We'll take, we'll make good advantage of that, at least for the first, uh, first little bit here while we do our trash run, do our mushroom run, and seal things off with a little bit or a lot of bit. Winter forage farming, winter tilling. Got to get used to saying that. I do like that better. You're jealous. You don't have any crystallariums yet. Uh, they're they're a very very valuable resource especially we won't be able to craft any of our own crystallariums until at least we hit mining level nine right and that that's like so many goals away because it's i mean the odds of us getting like that many mining level up goals right in a row and then being able to craft a crystallarium right after that it's we're probably not crafting any of our own for a considerable amount of time so everyone we can get here is a huge blessing hey hash browns <laughs> i told you they were going stale Have a good night there, Maggie. We're probably going to end off the stream here after this day anyway, so don't be missing too much. Is there any way you can accidentally get XP in Skull Cavern? There's nothing like Dust Sprites that can randomly give XP? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. Like, Dust Sprites don't appear anywhere in Skull Cavern, and I don't think there's any other monsters that can, like, break rocks or any, like, explosions that happen or anything like that. I think we're safe in Skull Cavern from, like, XP gain that is not by our own hand. Have a good one there, Zipporah, as well. Anyone who might be heading out, I know it's getting late for a lot of people, myself included, actually, but... <laughs> uh, we'll be ending things off shortly, but have a good night to anyone who is headed out. Are you sure you don't want to stick around for this last little bit of winter foragey goodness? See how many winter roots we can get today? The luck of the crystallarium on our side. There we go. He set me up nicely here, please. Six, nice, okay. Okay. 
Always love it when the pattern doesn't like break right off the bat. Sets us up hopefully nicely here. This is a good way to wind down, honestly. If, if, if every day could be a good luck day for Skull Caverns, we could just, like, you know, start each day with a nice, uh, nice treasure room high. And wind it down with, uh, with some good old mellow far- some mellow tilling out on the beach here, some beach combing, as it were. Some people might call it. It's a good day. It's a good day as far as I'm concerned. It does- as far as days go in the randomizer, you can get much better than that. I can't believe that. We only had, number one, we only had one reset, period. And number two, on our, like, very first treasure room ever, it's an actual, like, useful thing. The odds of that, I mean, like, there's there's a decent amount of useful stuff in, in Skull Cavern treasure rooms, but the fact that it's that useful. I'm telling you, it's, I think, it's, I think the Star Shards might have something to do with it. I don't know, guys, I don't know. I have yet to see the negative side of Star Shards. Mellow Tilling sounds like a sounds like a greeting on some sort of gardening commune. <laughs> Mellow Tilling to you. Mellow Tilling, friends. Mellow Tilling and have a peaceful harvest. Aw, oh, shoot. <laughs> I was so lost in my plans for a gardening cult. I mean, a, a gardening group that, uh, that I messed up my tilling here. I'll eat the hash browns. I'm not going to save them for anything particular. Misclick. You hate to see it. Mellow Tilling sounds like it could be a name. Maybe the first name Mellow, last name Tilling. It's a bit of an avant-garde name, but you know what? I can kind of see it. Call them like Mel for short. Is Mellow Yellow still a drink that exists in like any form? I don't know if I ever had it. I, I remember being, like, v pretty popular when I was young. Like, when I was, like, re like really young. Like, it was a name that I heard, like, all over the place. But I don't think I've seen Mellow Yellow in... Probably, like, 15 years, at least. Maybe it's just, like, discontinued in my neck of the woods, but... It seems to be, uh... It seems to be, like, lost media. <laughs> if, you can, if you consider drinks media. Not, it's not it's not really lost not like true lost melia lost melia lost media but you don't know what that is am I, I'm not making up mellow yellow am I mellow yellow it's like a soft drink of some kind it's like a citrus like lemon lime soft drink tell me someone knows what I'm talking about it's everywhere around here? Okay, I'm, I'm just glad that I wasn't, you know, making something up. Um, is this where I'm supposed to till? Yeah, okay, I don't know why that was already pre-tilled. Pattern shouldn't, like, overlap like that. Maybe I just put in, put, like, one of those, like, faux till spots in a weird place. Either way, I digress. Neither here nor there. The pattern is still holding strong. Ooh, that was lucky. Oh, another misclick. Shoot. And so that would have been there. So this is here. Just can't let yourself get too frazzled, Miss Frizzle, by uh by one misclick. Um It does throw off my my pattern recognition sensibilities, though. That's that's for darn sure. One, two, three. Take the clay, I suppose. 
be out here a little later than usual, probably. I, is this a tillable spot? That's definitely not tillable, so let's just not even not even kid ourselves on that one. Ooh, actually lined up quite well. It's always so satisfying when the when the spots line up with like the the scenery in such a satisfying way. Don't 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 mind me, Elliot. Do you think he, Elliot gets weirded out by all this? He's probably okay with it, right? It's like <laughs> he's see, he's seen weirder, surely, especially in like different timelines with like Chloe. Very similar to Mountain Dew, the Mellow Yellow, yeah. That's the, that seems to that would that would track, yeah. Based on what I know and what I remember of Mellow Yellow, it seemed very Mountain Dew adjacent. You do prefer pink lemonade over regular lemonade? I don't think I've met a soul on Earth who prefers normal lemonade. Oh wow, that was that was. I don't know whether that was you know. Part of the, all part of the plan, or just very lucky uh, pattern right there. Six, I think. One. Misclick again. Gosh darn it. Fine. It's all good. There. Been a little lost in the weeds around here. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I'm just checking. Hold on. I'm just catching up on chat. Catching up on chat. Probably giving him new book ideas. <laughs> that would. Be, that's. What would that book be about? I'd read it for sure. The slow descent of a the, the the story of a farmer's slow descent into madness, <laughs> as they unravel the, the very fabric of the universe itself, for the sole purpose of amassing hundreds upon hundreds of winter tubers. All right, I want to get up to a hundred snow yams, and, and I think we're good. There we go. All right, a hundred snow yams, hundred and eleven winter roots. I will call that a good day. Simply blueberry lemonade is an S tier lemonade. I don't think I've ever tried any variety of simply lemonade. Do they make like a non alcoholic version? Because the only version I know is like the like the hard lemonade from Simply. Peach lemonade? You guys are spitting at all these lemonades I've never heard of before. Blueberry peach? Next you're gonna tell me there's like a licorice lemonade or something. Honestly. Sign me up. I'll 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 taste test that one. That's a lot of winter forge, holy moly. Alright, we're we're off to a pretty good start as far as that goes. This is this is gonna be a lot better than geode farming, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that one. Full free. And 10 gold from torches, every little bit counts. Every little bit counts towards that half a mil goal. We'll get there by the end of the year, mark my words. I think we're off to a good start. Well, this was a this was a remarkably productive stream, I'm not gonna lie to you. I did not expect to be staring at three crystallariums at the end of this uh, stream, but here we are. Just goes to show you never know what the game has in store for you. Throw you curveball after curveball after curveball, and you still won't expect the fourth one. Either way. I am going to call it a stream there. It is pretty late for me. But I will be back tomorrow, and it's going to be an early stream tomorrow, so it's going to be a quick turnaround. I'll be back tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we'll continue on our Winter Forge extravaganza here. Hopefully a little more Skull Cavern uh, spelunking as well. How many staircases we got? We got 31. Probably want to save up at least until like 40 again. Maybe even more, more than that before we go back out. But either way, I digress. Hope you all enjoyed the stream. Thank you again for the support. If you did enjoy the stream, I would greatly appreciate if you leave a like down below. 
little thumbs up button down there. It greatly helps out the channel. And it might make me stop saying greatly. <laughs> but what can I say? Things are just great around here. Either way, I hope to see you all tomorrow. And, uh, you know, if not, hey, it was good hanging out. I digress, though. I'm going to get out of here, leave you with the fan art compilation as per usual. Be good to one another, be good to yourselves, and uh, be kind. Kind as always. See hey, everyone. This is Argon Matrix signing on out. Thank you and have a great night. Bye-bye.